one squad averaging 44 points a game, the other one giving up only four. Well, Brent, I think it's a sensational matchup. Both teams undefeated, both ranked one and two, and statistical leaders, as you, as you have already pointed out. But I think the interesting thing, and the fans should watch, is the offense, the explosive offense of Iowa, will go against the tough defense of Michigan. That's the confrontation there. Let's see which one prevails. You know, frequently, though, Era, it's not the strengths that decides a game of this magnitude. That's exactly right. When the ball changes hands, it'll be the Michigan offense against the Iowa defense. And Michigan is much improved offensively. They would love to possession that football to keep it away from Chuck Long and Harmon and keep them over on the bench with Hayden Fry. But you've gotten the mood of the two coaches. You talked with them? Well, you know I, what I found? I found that Bo Schembechler's more relaxed than Hayden Fry this week. <laughs> well, that surprises me. I'll tell you that. But I, I have found this, Brent, in games of this magnitude when you put two giants together, that the turnovers and where they occur, the penalties and the kicking game influence the outcome of the game. The captains proceeding to midfield. The tension building here for the coin flip. What will their strategy be? Some coaches, after they win the flip, automatically defer to the second half. Others want to go on defense in this situation, and some want the ball. Jerry Hendrickson is our referee with the captains. 42 heads, tails. Call it when it's in the air, please. Tails. He calls tails. It comes up tails. You will defer to the second half. You have your choice. We'll take the football. You will take the football. Defend that goal. Okay, you turn around. Michigan State has won the toss and deferred their choice. So the Hawkeyes will have the ball first, and we'll be back with the kickoff after this commercial break and a word from your local station. Number one hosts number two, Bo Schembechler. His 17th season at Michigan, his 23rd year overall of coaching, taking on Hayden Fry in his seventh year at Iowa, where he is 47, 28, and one. Hayden's Hawkeyes will field the ball. Rick Sutkowitz from Troy, Michigan, will kick it off for the Wolverines. It's showtime. Touchback. Iowa will have it on the 20-yard line. And let's take a look at their backfield. Chuck Long, the Heisman Trophy candidate, will be a quarterback. His blocking fullback is Fred Bush. His number one weapon is number 31, Ronnie Harmon. Out wide, number 87, Scott Helverson. And number 40, Bill Happel. His tight end, number 86, Mike Flagg. So, Aaron, here we are, one versus two. You have been there before as head coach at Notre Dame. What does it mean to be in this situation? Well, the, this football team, these two teams, I should say, are in the middle of their seasons, and they still have a lot of football to play. Ten games for each after this game is over. They show a double tight, and they run right at the heart of that Michigan defense with Ronnie Harmon gaining five yards coming out against them. Now, is this what Hayden Fry wants to do? Well, a lot will depend on his offensive line. Dave Croston at left tackle will help open the way. Humphrey is 6'3", 265. Senlinger, 6'2", 255. Bob Cratch, the other guard, 6'4", 270. And the other tackle, Mike Hate, 6'4", and 260. And again, Iowa comes out double tight, and here comes Harmon. Jitterbugging to the outside, close to the first down before he is slapped down there by the Wolverines in that tough defense. Garland Rivers coming up. Brent, this is the guy that Bo Schembechler wants to stop. Ronnie Harmon. You see a well-blocked play as Bob Cratch, number 70, pulls and traps to the outside. Harmon makes his moves. Good support there by Garland Rivers. But Bo feels he's got to stop Harmon. He thinks he's a very, very dangerous runner. Donald Hudson checks in to this Iowa lineup. Now, David is a fullback, number 20. It's a power eye formation that Hayden shows, and immediately Harmon gets the first down. Ah, 
Arrow, we see something happening right here. They are running right at Michigan. Yes. Michigan will do a lot of stunning in there. They feel when they hear that they might be able to catch them in the opposite direction. They've been coming to the short side of the field. But this is very interesting. We've got the confrontation between the leading scoring team in the country, Iowa's explosive offense, against the number one team in the country, Michigan, in defensive scoring. It's, it's going to be a real battle. Now again, two tight ends. Clark is 49, only one wide receiver. Straight ahead they come. And again it was Harmon getting another five yards for the Hawkeyes. Mike Mallory, one of the defensive ringleaders, number 42 in on that stop. And already Harmon has carried four times for 19 yards. An enormous crowd on hand, as you might expect. They may set a record even though it rained hard yesterday and throughout the morning. But the artificial turf dries quickly. They squeegee the excess water off, and they run the big fellow one more time. And again, it is Harmon out beyond the 40-yard line, short of the first down, Andy Moeller. Number 49, he is the son of the defensive coordinator of Michigan, Gary Moeller. Take a look at him from an end zone shot. They fill very quickly. They're linebackers that fill and try to establish a flat line along the line of scrimmage, and they certainly do a good job there. That flow along the line that the Michigan Wolverines feature on defense. They do not allow that bubble to open up. Third and two, and now only one tight end, and Long will throw for the first time. Great protection. First down for Iowa. He drills Billy Happel, number 40. Cochran was right on top of it, but Billy Happel came back to the ball. You see, Long has an awful lot of time. No pressure. He finds Happel coming back to the ball. Cochran, number 30, comes up but cannot strip the ball away. First the down. The key was the offensive line. Look at the protective pocket. The Wolverines could not penetrate until it was too late. And then Long, and his best asset as a passer, he will put the ball where you can handle it. And he did just that for Happel. Another first down for the Hawkeyes, and they run Harmon. And Moeller, number 49, met him right there, about a yard beyond the line of scrimmage. The linebackers there are so intelligent for Coach Schimbeckler. They really are. They're schooled well, of course, having fathers as coaches. But, uh, Brent, one of the things that's happening, you notice that Iowa, over on the right side, right hash mark, immediately went to the short side of the field. Michigan has a history of veering and looping to the field, and they're attacking the short side of the field, trying to penetrate. That time, Michigan did a good job. Well, the short side here would be to Iowa's right. Let's see what they do on second and eight. They come to the wide side, long on the roll, and he was brought down right away. Akers, number 33, an outside linebacker, stepped across, and Chuck did not have time to put the ball up. You know, Eric, it's interesting that throughout his career, Chuck Long has not fared all that well against Michigan's defense. In three games, Long has thrown only one touchdown pass against them, and that came two years ago. When Iowa shut out Michigan last year 26 to nothing, they scored all three of their touchdowns running. So it is third and nine. You would expect a pass in this situation. A defense loves to have you third and nine, and Iowa shows a shotgun. The blitz was on. Mallory was coming, almost picked off. Michigan right away, when Long showed shotgun, stepped right up in with the blitz. Mallory was coming, and Billy Harris got a hand on the ball and swatted it to the ground. There was great pressure here on Long, but watch Billy Harris, number 56, roll out of his block and almost intercept his pass. It was intended for Harmon, number 31, a little screen to the left. Something new for Iowa, the shotgun. Kostrabala, the left-footed punter of Iowa, is ready. He gets it off, and Eric Campbell, number five, letting it go out of bounds, and there is a penalty marker down near midfield. Era already in this game, we have seen Coach Hayden Fry come up with two wrinkles, and this penalty is going to be against Michigan, by the way. We get the preliminary signal here. We've seen two new wrinkles. He opens up with a double tight end, and he shows a shotgun. 
So Bo Schimbeckler's defensive staff now will have to counter what Hayden is going to do here today. He may have them a little bit off balance. And of course, a big moment here because Michigan is seldom penalized in a situation like this. Well, penalties are important in a football game, but going back to what Hayden Fry wants, let's listen here. Offside defense accepted, repeat the down, fourth. Now that will still not give them the first down, as the referee told you, but it gives them just a little bit better field position, and Iowa would like a better punt. I mean, this turns out to be a break for Iowa and the first in the game because that ball rolled out of bounds over by the 20-yard line, and they figure to get much better field position punting from here than they did. So Kostravala gets a second chance as Michigan commits the first air. Headed for the sideline again and out of bounds. He is going to punt like this today, then the Hawkeyes could be in trouble because when you're in a game such as this, field position is absolutely critical, and that is only a 19 yard punt. So when you come back, the Wolverines will have the ball. Ten minutes and nine seconds left in the opening quarter. It's number one Iowa against number two Michigan. The Wolverines with the ball for the first time. Their quarterback, Jimmy Harbaugh, bends down inside that huddle and calls their first play. Generally, Michigan will open with the fullback or the tailback running off tackle. It is White and Morris behind Harbaugh. It'll be Morris cuts back to the middle left guard, and there was a hole. Let's take a look at that Michigan offense that you'll be hearing from here this afternoon. Jimmy Harbaugh did not play last year because of a broken arm. And Gerald White will play the tail and the fullback. Jamie Morris, he's the breakaway tailback. John Kolasar, freshman, good speed on the outside. Paul Jokic, six foot eight inches tall. And the tight end Eric Caddis has already caught five touchdown passes this year. So Michigan comes up to the line, second and four after the six yard gain. Harbaugh looks out over the defense. It is a young Hawkeye defense. They are the biggest question in this game this afternoon. Harbaugh to Morris, Morris with a hole, and he cracks out for a first down, and he makes Jay Norvell, number 45, make the tackle. by Jay Norvell. It's a good start for the Wolverines. Watch over the right side here. Good blocking as Elliott, number 79, comes across. A trap is made, and you see Jamie Morris find the seam. There's Norvell, number 45, stepping in and making the play. Era, just as we saw a couple weeks ago with Lorenzo White in Michigan State, holes opening up in that Iowa interior defense could be a factor. Really is. This is a young Iowa defense. They're improving, though. First down. Ball is at the 41-yard line. It'll be the fullback, White, and they do not surprise the Hawkeyes that time. Larry Station, number 36, quickly stepped up in there. Now the offensive line, John Elliott, one of two superb tackles. Bo has had to change his guards because of injuries. John Vitale, Bob Tavacino moved from the interior to center this year. Mike Kraus is his other starting guard, and Clay Miller from Norman, Oklahoma. He could be the leader of that offensive line here this afternoon, along with Elliott. And an upset room there. Here we've got a second and seven. Michigan has not yet thrown its first pass, and they will not hear either. And Morris is brought down. Big Jeff Cross, number 76, wailed his man, got across the line, and penetrated. Well, with that up, upset brewing, let's go back to New York and find out what's going on. Brent, you are right. Syracuse has been throwing the ball short all day, but here they go on top. Don McPherson and Mike Ciano. 45 yards later, Syracuse is on top, 20 to 17, but Penn State is driving. They're on the seven yard line. Let's go back to Brent Nera. Thank you, Pat. And here in Iowa City, it's third and six now. And the crowd picking up the noise level, and Jim Harbaugh says, I can't hear. Hold on. And the referee alertly steps in and says, we'll give you a discretionary timeout, and that's the discretion of the referee. Michigan is not charged with it, and they want to take the crowd out of the game right away. Well, two weeks ago, we had the same situation in the Michigan State-Iowa game, but the referee has the discretion of giving the uh, quarterback a timeout until the crowd quiets down. 
Last week he didn't do it, or two weeks ago he didn't do it. Immediately in this ball game, I think the importance of the ball game and all the crowd noise. Now they're going to come back up and try it again. All right, Aaron, here we go. It's third and six. It's no score. Michigan's first possession. Brett, the burden, the burden now falls on the Iowa defense because they have to signal to that crowd. Otherwise, there could be a charge timeout and a five-yard penalty assessed to the Iowa defense. You see the official walk in now. He probably will talk to the Iowa team. There see? he is doing just that. See, two well-disciplined football teams. That's Hayden Fry, of course. And the Michigan team, well-schooled, not going to blow a play. Era, would you put the ball up here and test Harbaugh's arm? You've got a third and six. I certainly would. I think I'd go ahead and throw the football. They're in good position, 45-yard line. And Caddis has been an excellent receiver. There it is. He was looking for Caddis, who was covered. Now he gets it off to Jamie Morris, who was coming underneath, very close to a first down. George Davis, the other interior linebacker, in on the tackle. I think it's a little short. He doesn't. He doesn't like the marking. He thinks he had the first down. Fourth and short, and Michigan elects the punt. Robbins to punt it for the Wolverines. and Smith are set deep. High punt by Robbins. Coverage comes down and Kappel with a fair catch. Inside of the 20-yard line. When you come back, Iowa will have the ball. Back live in Iowa City. 6.48 to go in the opening quarter. Still no score. The second-ranked Wolverines and their defense huddled around Gary Moeller because Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes have come up with a few new wrinkles on their offense here this afternoon. You know, with about uh, eight minutes gone in this ball game, it's just like a couple of heavyweight fighters kind of feeling themselves out in the first couple rounds. They don't want to take any chances. People, I suppose some people thought Bo should go ahead and go for it at the 50-yard line, but that's the right decision in a game like this. Kick the ball down. Play your defense. Field position is so important does not have good field position here. They will start at the 18 with a lone setback. And that is Hudson, the fullback, going nowhere. So they elect to open this series without Ronnie Harmon at tailback. And Mark Mesner, a defensive tackle, and Andy Moeller wrap him up. Penn State has jumped back into the lead since Pat Hayden had that Syracuse score for you. Nebraska finding more difficulty than they expected with Missouri today. And some believe that the winner there will go on to the Sugar Bowl. We'll have to see. Now Chuck Long and the Hawkeyes are ready to go back to work. It is second and nine. Here is Harmon finding daylight, cutting for the first down, and that has concerned Schumacher more than anything else. You'll see on the, this play, the tackles, Hartenstein as well as Messner line up over the guards and it's well blocked. Instead of being in their odd defense, you'll see the double team in there with Pratch and you'll see Mike Haight break through and look at that hole right there for Harmon. They caught him perfectly. It was well blocked, a good call and a little change in defense that Iowa caught the Wolverines. Harmon, seven carries, 35 yards already. First and 10, ball is out at the 33. And on first down, they will run Harmon again. Watch him jitterbug back and forth, and finally the swarming Michigan defense closes off all exit routes with Garland Rivers making the hit. Well, let's get that update on Penn State, and let's go back to New York, and here's Pat Hayden. Brent, that score you mentioned just a moment ago, they scored with 153 left on a pick play. Steve Smith in a 33 right out of the backfield. That They lead 24 to 20, and they just intercepted a Syracuse pass. Let's go back to Brenton Aaron. And here, of course, we have no score. 5-10 to go in the opening quarter. Miles 
second and 13. That last play, the swarming Michigan defense was really evident. Harmon was trying to cut it back, and there was all kinds of pursuit. Off the play fake, he'll throw toward the sideline, and Billy Happel makes a fine catch. Close to a first down, Happel was working well at the sideline. What a great control receiver he is. Happel's father played on an Iowa team which went to the Rose Bowl back in 1956. Watch the fake to Harmon. Now that freezes one of the linebackers. Now Long waits for Happel to break free, finds him, and look where he throws the ball. Right there where it is catchable, and Happel keeps his feet inbound. About third and one, less than a yard shy of a first down. You know what impressed me on that play, Brent? Ron Harmon, the tailback, faked up the middle. Mark Messner had made a loop around, was rushing clear, and Harmon blocked him right at the line of scrimmage. A great job. Now let's see if Harmon gets the call here out of the power line. A fake to him and Long coming around the corner for the first down. Penalty marker is down near the fullback. There's a penalty flag down where Fred Bush was throwing a block. Jim Scarcelli, the outside linebacker, was held. And that's the call against Iowa. So here is this Michigan defense. This is hard to believe, folks, but in five games, they've given up only one touchdown. Jim Scarcelli, who was just held, now Mark Mesner. He's a fine young defensive tackle. Billy Harris, you just do not get him out of the middle. Mike Hammerstein, he's an exciting interior lineman, and Jeff Haker's on the outside. So you hear those names all afternoon long. One other thing about the Michigan defense, they haven't yet given up an extra point error. <laughs> and look what they did to those quality running backs. Now keep in mind that Emory of Wisconsin gained more than 100 yards against Iowa. And White of Michigan State hit the Hawkeyes for plus 200 yards here a couple weeks ago. So a big difference. It's the shotgun by Chuck Long. Third and 11. Inside handoff to Hudson. Hudson going nowhere. Read beautifully by Moeller and Mallory, those inside linebackers. The new wrinkles have not fooled the two linebackers. Well, I think that uh, Michigan did not expect a fullback to run, but they were not fooled on this play. You see Long slipping the ball to Hudson, number 20, expecting that they, Michigan would key on Harmon. But boy, that Michigan defense was all over the place. Here is a key in why Schimbeckler punted. He wants to put the pressure back on Costa Bala. But a 19-yard punt, they go out after him. He does get it off, but there's a penalty marker down. It'll be roughing the punter. Michigan went for the block that time, and instead, they roughed up Hostrovala. Errol, last week you saw the Wolverines block one of the Michigan State punts. We certainly did, but it came from the inside by Dieter Heron. I think Dave Arnold, number 27, a freshman, may have made a very crucial mistake. He left his feet. He almost got the punt. I don't think he got a piece of it, but as we see here in the replay, coming from the top of the screen, number 27, David Arnold launches himself. He will catch Castrobala's leg right there. And roughing of the passer is called. First down, big mistake. When you rough the punter like that, Aaron, I think folks on that picture got a good indication as to why the penalty is so severe. You are absolutely defenseless when you get that leg up in the air. And I have seen occasions, not frequently, but I've seen occasions when a punter suffered a broken leg when someone was blocked into him in college football or high school. So it is first and 10. The ball is at the 47. Oh, we go right back to the basic thing that we talked at the top of the show. Fumbles, penalties, the importance of the penalties, where they occur and how they occur. Now, Iowa has three more opportunities, and you can't give a great offensive football team like they are too many chances. Now, they're near midfield where Chuck Long and Hayden Fry might open this game up a little bit. On first down, from the protective pocket, it's Happel cutting in across midfield down to the 46. Now you can do so many more things offensively, Era, after you get down there in that attack zone. You don't have to be so conservative. And we'll, and Take a look at the rest of that defense, the heart of the linebackers. Mike Mallory and Andy Moeller, you seldom fool them. Garland Rivers, he'll hit you as hard as anybody in college football today. 
Brad Cochran, another outstanding cornerback, and the safeties. Ivan Hicks, his brother, playing with the 49ers. Tony Gant did not play last year with an injury. Long to throw again, incomplete. He wanted Quinn Early, who was breaking from left to right, and Long took a lick, and he's helped back up by Mesner. So Chuck Long pulling out again, and this is one of the few times that I have seen Long this year overthrow a receiver. That was so close, but just off the fingertips of Quinn Early, who has great speed. Had he caught it, he might have split the middle and gone for six. He was wide open. I think that uh, Iowa now has come to the uh, fact that Michigan is going to be in a lot of zone defense rather than a lot of man-to-man. -man. And this guy, Long, is really on target against the zone. They ran the fullback in third and short era. And again, oh, Michigan was ready as he coughed the ball up. That oh. ball was loose. He called it down before the uh, fumble, I think. I think he hit the ground. Now, Mike Hammerstein, 66, and Mark Mesner, 60, closed in. And when those two tackles hit you, one 240 and the other 235 like this, they can jar the ball. Now, Hudson is one of Hayden Fry's new wrinkles today. He has elected to go with a fullback who might be a better runner than Bush. Short of the first down, Kostra Bala to punt it again. And he lifts this one high. Tony Gant lets it bounce. Rolls toward the end zone, and Iowa goes to down it inside the five. It's going to be marked down at the one-yard line. What a terrific job by Jay Norvell, who's playing great football for Iowa. He's our strong safety, and you'll see Norvell come down. The ball, I don't know whether he touched that ball there or not. Apparently not. But he knocks the ball out of bounds on the one-yard line. But it's marked up where he touched it at the 10. This is not the kind of field position that Bo likes. Back in Iowa City. Coach, you got great eyesight. You were right. Norvell touched that ball, and that's why it's spotted just inside the tent. Well, that's a little better position for Michigan than the one-yard line, but still it's not very good field position. The very thing that these two coaches are really jockeying back and forth. You can see it. Both have come up with fourth down and short. Don't want to take any chances. I'll be very conservative down here. I'm talking about Michigan. That would be my guess. They move Pattis, the tight end, to the left side. They split the two setbacks, and they'll come with White. They power it off the right tackle, and he muscles his way out to the 14-yard line. Larry Station, number 36, he was on top. And he gets up, and it'll be second down, and there you see Miami with Testa Verde testing that Oklahoma defense. The Sooners have not seen too many running, or I should say too many passing quarterbacks this year. They've been dominating running teams. And in that game, a little bit of a difference as you see some of the rest of the scores running by. Second down and six. From behind the eye. Morris. Daylight. First down. Stays on his feet. Gets out to the 25-yard line before he is wrestled to the ground. Norvell was there, but it's a 12-yard gain there. Watch number 51, Mike Kraus, right there. Step up and through. Pick up the linebacker, and you see Jamie Morris with a beautiful hole at the line at the point of attack. Great job by Kraus, who has replaced injured Mike Hussar. Coach, it's great to get a first down coming out like this. Then you don't have to punt the ball back there near the 10-yard line. So it's first down for Jim Harbaugh. Here comes Morris around the left. And he gets out again close to another first down. Devon Mitchell finally brought him down, but it was a second effort there by Morris. Really was. He also got an excellent block from Perriman, the lead fullback. The ball could have been stopped, or I should say Jamie could have been stopped in the backfield there, but Perriman did a nice job. First and ten. Ball is at the 36-yard line. No score. It's number one trying to defend number two. And here is White out close to the 40-yard line. George Davis again brings him down. And, of course, tomorrow on the NFL Today, we've got Irv Cross on that 
Ram defense. John Madden up live on Lawrence Taylor and some of the problems he's encountered. And we'll talk to Pete Rose about the first game of the World Series. Then, of course, most of you will see Dallas against Philadelphia or Washington against the Giants and the rest of our games. Regional coverage tomorrow. Here in Iowa City, second and six. Ball is at the 40. And he is pushed out of bounds. Jay Norvell, number 45, gets over on him. And he came a long way to make that play that Norvell did. He has really played good football, good solid football for the Iowa Hawkeyes. We've seen him two or three times, and he reacts well to any kind of run. He put on some real hits right there, number 45, two weeks ago when he played Michigan State. Bo Schembechler's strategy starting to come clear offensively. Ball control, try to reduce the mistakes. He obviously thinks that he can run against this Iowa defense. Both coaches do not want to beat themselves. You can see this ultra-conservative approach. Marbonne put it up as the first quarter runs out. He will not get it off. Pat Peterson, the nose guard, number 50. Took Harbaugh down for the loss. Just what you'd expect. One and two. No score in the first quarter in Iowa City. We'll return after this commercial break. And a word from your local station. Back in Iowa City to start the second quarter. Michigan and Iowa are scoreless. Monty Robbins to do the punting for the Wolverines. He's had a great band, Kansas. Smith and Happel to return it here for the Hawkeyes. Happel has got the fair catch at the 24 yard line. So here comes Chuck Long and we had an opportunity to ask the Heisman Trophy candidate to put this game in perspective for us. Well, I think, uh, you know, it's the number one against the number two team in the nation, and uh, Michigan poses a lot of problems for us defensively. They, they got a great defensive ball club, and uh, they're the type of uh, defense that's kind of like our defense. They, they bend, but they don't break. And we're just going to have to be patient offensively in order to beat this team. So far, neither defense has indeed broken. Over the middle, complete to Halverson, coming from left to right, dipping into the middle. And Aaron, there's the one soft spot in that Michigan secondary. When they do a lot of zoning, they take deep drops, and the underneath patterns are open. And I think we can expect to see a lot more passing in this quarter with, with Long having the win. You see here the same thing. There's a zone. Halverson comes underneath the zone. 49 there. Mallory, or I should say Muller, along with Mallory, 42, makes, they make the play. Second down and one. High formation. They run Harmon, and he is hammered short of that first down this time. He tried to squeeze free. Billy Harris, in the middle of that Michigan defense, he is so tough to move out of there, that middle guard. Well, Bo says you just can't knock him out of there. Messner was also in there. He's very quick. And Garland Rivers was in on the play. You know, he's a short side corner. He was up there making the play. They really support to the ball. They take their pass run keys. But I think that what Long can do, what it looks like to me, is he's going to be able to pass the short, the short routes. Here's third and one. They show power eye. And he's going to pass out of it. On third and one, works the sideline to Halverson. Post popped hard, but not before he got across midfield. That's a great call by the Hawkeyes. Well, that's right, Brent. It was a great call. Third down and short. Everybody looking for the run. Halverson came out of there. Wide open. He's lined up right halfback. Fake inside the harm and number 31. He picks up Mallory, the 42, coming in on the long. There it is, right there. Beautiful pass by Long. It was a 22-yard game. The Wolverines obviously expecting a running play. Halverson got free, and as Eric told you, he puts the ball right there where you can catch it, and Scott Halverson, a walk-on, did the rest. It is first and ten, and now the Hawkeyes are on the attack. Harmon just jitterbugs past one tackler, battles his way to a two-yard gain. Andy Moeller brings him down. You know, 
speaking of great running backs here earlier this afternoon on uh, CBS, Keith Byers made his long awaited return back from that broken foot. 106 yards and two touchdowns. And of course, next week, we will see the Ohio State Buckeyes up in Minneapolis against a surprise team of the Big Ten. Lou Holtz's Golden Gophers. Next Saturday afternoon. Here's second down. Long over the middle. And again, Helderson was wide open. Coming across, but they are short of the first down. No, it's interesting. Bo Schembechler and Gary Moeller, their defensive coordinator, talked about the fact they wanted to stop Harmon. They felt that Harmon would beat him. They respect Long, but they figured that Long was going to hit 60% of his passes, but it would take longer for him to beat him that way. It's an interesting philosophy defensively, but here they come up with third and short again, and they're close to field goal range. Now they show that power eye formation, and they run Harmon this time out of it, and Michigan was ready. He got out to the first down marker, and let's see where they finally put the ball down. Hammerstein got a hand on him, but Harmon wiggled free for the first down, and that will show you how much Ronnie Harmon is valued. You know, it's interesting. Yesterday, Hayden Fry said he wants to get every time, if he can put the ball in the hands of Harmon five times, he knows something exciting is going to happen one out of those five. Well, he's had the ball 11 times already. If I was a linebacker, I'd say something exciting happens five straight times. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He is tough. Split backs. Harmon is the long's right. He works out as a pass receiver, and Long is under enormous pressure that time. Mike Hammerstein broke a block and got in on him. There are no better pass rushers inside than Hammerstein. His brother, Mark Hammerstein, was a fine offensive guard on this Michigan team, but because of an injury, he has been lost. Now, Long knows he's under pressure. He can feel it. Now, here he is just trying to get rid of that pass, not be sacked and take the loss, and it went incomplete as Hammerstein had wrapped him up and was bringing him down. Now it is second and ten. Long calling the play at the line. Harmon. I, I thought sure that Iowa would throw the ball that time, and I could see that Michigan was deployed in the zone. They'd been, I think Iowa had been able to hit that underneath pattern again. But here's a big down right now, third down. And you know, Hayden Fry is a crafty guy. This is a good spot for a screen or a draw. You see Bobby Smith going into the ball game, and he's a speedster. And the other tight end, Clark, also checking in. Halverson and Harmon come out. Push the fullback is left in to protect. Long pulls out, checks downfield, throws the half complete. First down near the 16-yard line. That's a 17-yard gain before Garland Rivers can bring him down. No underneath coverage as you see the linebackers 49 bowler and Mallory flow it long. Long turns back, throws, there's no one between. You see Garland Rivers making the play. I'll tell you the one thing about Long, he is really accurate. When he has someone open, it's a rarity when he doesn't hit him. Happel has caught four of Long's passes for 44 yards here today, and Long has completed three others. So his number one target has been Happel, and Long will use a timeout. There was some confusion out there. So rather than take a five-yard penalty, Long has a timeout. We'll be right back. We're scoreless in Iowa City. The first period score, Clay. Introducing the 1986 front-wheel drive Family Camry from Toyota. The car that gives you more. More headroom than any other compact and more hip room and leg room than many compact cars. That means the Family Camry has more room for a rock group or a group of rocks. The Town Council of Slezak, Michigan, with the mayor's dog thrown in, 42 gas balloons, two sets of identical twins, plus a man named Murray. The Family Camry from Toyota. Who can ask for anything more? Freezing cold and the sirens blow and the mercury's down to 20 below. You don't need problems, you gotta go. That's why America goes with Prestone. 
A fresh fill of Prestone 2 antifreeze fights freeze up and rust up too. A radiator could look this bad after just 10,000 miles of driving on weak, neglected antifreeze, while the Prestone radiator looks this good. Get the Prestone difference. America goes and goes and goes with Prestone. The year's top marathon field, including Olympic champion Joan Benoit, is expected in Chicago for America's Marathon tomorrow on CBS Sports. Well, the Toyota Leadership Award is presented weekly to a team member who's been singled out by his athletic department and faculty advisor for his team contributions, grades, and citizenship. Today's winners are Bill Happel of Iowa and Mike Reinhold of Michigan. Toyota will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Arrow, we have no score. 10.39 to go here in the second. As you predicted with the wind at his back, Chuck Long has been going to the air. Now they are down close to the 15-yard line. What do you think Hayden will come up with here? Well, your guess is as good as mine right here. I don't know. What it, they're going to run it here. And the Michigan defense is really going to be challenged. That was Harmon coming off the right side of that offensive line to inside the 15-yard line. Picking up a couple of yards, and again we see Billy Harris. So Iowa probing away at that middle, but now they're going to have to get something going on this play. The second down, about eight yards. I think we can expect a screen draw or pass. And the thing that the most dangerous thing right now to the Wolverines is Long's arm. He is really accurate, but they shorten the field up. There's less field to defend. Inside to Harmon, led beautifully by the Wolverines. Mike Hammerstein said, no, you don't, number 31. And if I have ever seen an All-American defensive lineman this early in the season, you're looking at him right now. There's an awful lot of motivation. You see him give him the limp hip right there and come right inside and get that ball. What did he give him? Gives him the limp hip. I mean, he slides <laughs> right through there. Something I don't have. <laughs> Third and 12 now, and after that big defensive play, maybe Happel here, Errol? Could be. He's, all, he's dangerous. Michigan is late in deploying their defenses. They seem to be confused. Long looking at him under pressure, steps away from Akers, comes over to the right side, throws out it. Is it no, no catch to the back of the end zone? The official working the end line came across and said no catch. Now take a look as Scott Helverson is clear at the back. He is beyond Brad Cochran, number 30. At that point, he appears to be inbounds. Coming down, but that official did not make the call. The gentleman you're looking at did not make the call. It was the official coming across now look at that foot right there. Do I see water right there? Era? That looks like a touchdown to me. I agree with you. I think he was in. No question about it. Hopeless. Up with the kick. Iowa has a 35-yard field goal, but they have been robbed of three points and probably four with the extra point. Now, before I hammer the officials too hard, let us take still another look at what was happening. Remember now, this is not the NFL. One foot inbounds. Now, here's the pass. Helverson is behind Cochran. Now, here comes Scott. He's got the ball. Watch the foot. You bet that's inbounds. No question about it. That should have been a touchdown. We've got timeout. Here's that controversial moment as we get up there and freeze it where he has control. You tell us what to look for. Well, it certainly appears that he has his foot right here in bounds, and also you see that he has possession of the ball. It should be a touchdown. There it is right there. He drags it clear across, and he has possession of the ball. Now, Era, that other official who did not make it, shouldn't he have called the one off if he saw it? Yes, I thought he had a good vantage point, but he waited for the back judge to call it. Mike Kennett, number five, will kick off. Holtland has not practiced for the last four weeks. His quadricep muscle in his right leg is injured, and he did it early in the season. And so, Hayden Fry elects to go with someone who, with the wind at his back, might be able to put it deep, but he does not get it deep enough. Fielded at about the eight-yard line. Jamie 
Moore is coming through near midfield. He cuts to the right, and he is brought down at the 31-yard line. A break for the Wolverines as Jamie Morris almost busts a kickoff return. 60 yards. He brings it back. He also got great blocking on that play, Brent, right at the point of attack, if you'll watch. There's Jamie fielding the ball. You get a shot here where he's right there. You can see the hole open up. His speed, he accelerates through. And this is a very fine run by Jamie Morris. You see number 21, Devon Mitchell. Now, look at the hole that Era told you about. It just opens up like the Red Sea party. And Morris does the rest. Wiltshire has checked in at tailback, number 27. Morris gets a well-deserved breather. Wiltshire battles off of one would-be tackler and gets down near the 25-yard line. The Hawkeyes should have had him back for about a two or three-yard lo loss that time. They got a lot of penetration. There was no blocking at the point of attack. Oh, that was Wilshire that time. Didn't realize it. So we are live in Iowa City, Iowa, where the number one ranked Iowa Hawkeyes lead the number two team in the nation, Michigan, by a field goal. Michigan got a break. Iowa should have had a touchdown. And now let's see if the Wolverines can make the most of it. Second down and three. to Wiltshire, who barrels straight ahead for what appeared to be a first down, depending on where they spot the ball. Stop by Larry Station. And there is the field goal kicker for the Wolverines, young Mike Gillette. And Bo said, I trust him with my life under pressure. <laughs> I didn't think Bo would trust his life to anybody, but uh, <laughs> here's a first and ten. at the 21-yard line. Harbaugh to throw. Now he runs, and he throws near the line of scrimmage. Not a wise decision. Devon Mitchell, who burned this team with two interceptions a year ago, almost snapped that one off here this afternoon. Schembechler would have preferred that he had continued to run here, Coach. This is a good job by Devon Mitchell. Harbaugh makes a poor decision because he throws the ball late. Devon Mitchell is right there, should have picked that ball off. Normally, he just eats the, that kind of a ball. Interception right now for Devon Mitchell. Pryor was the outside lineman who had pressured Harbaugh. Jamie Morris returns. It's second and ten. Off the fake, Harbaugh with time, goes to Jokic in the end zone, and he is beyond the end line. See his size, the former basketball player. He had the advantage on Ken Sims, who's only 5'11. Jokic is 6'8. Well, there's no question about this one being out of bounds. He makes the catch, but look at his right foot. His not, left foot is not on the ground yet. Of course, he's 6'8. One step for him is about four yards. You want to know something? His stride is so long, his left foot was closer to being in bounds than you might expect. <laughs> than I expected it to be. We've got a timeout right now. Harbaugh goes over to check with Bose looking at his shortlist. So while Schimbeckler talks to his staff upstairs and Harbaugh awaits their decision, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. The Big Ten race is hot and getting hotter. The Ohio State Buckeyes will face the Golden Gophers of Minnesota in college football next Saturday on CBS Sports. Era, show us the difference here on Jokic. If you watch the left foot of Jokic right here, it is not on the ground when he has possession. You see there, the foot comes off. He doesn't have possession of the ball. The foot is off the ground, and it must be on the ground when you have possession of the football. It is third and ten. Michigan using a timeout because this is one of their bigger decisions of the game. They will have 
split running backs, White and Morris. Harbaugh to put it up. Over the middle, and he's got Jokic. Jokic breaks a tackle, gets inside the 15, and there's penalty markers down all over the place. Yeah, the Might be a mask. Harbaugh's pass complete to Jokic. Larry Station was over there on Jokic, and that preliminary signal when he came up was indeed a face mask, era. Well, it's a tough penalty there because now it will give him a first down. Jokic had not made the first down. It would have forced a field goal, but you can see the importance of the penalty here. Take, taking a look, watch Jokic, six foot eight, cross from your right to your left, right there. Makes a great catch. That ball was high. Shakes a tackler there. That's Davis, number 37. 36 station finally brings him down. Let's see where the mask call is. Whether it's 29. Larry Station coming up with his right hand, grabbed the mask right there, no question about it, good call. And a very tough penalty, Brent, because it would have forced Michigan into a field goal. Now they have the ball first down at the six. Bo Schembechler would say it's a great penalty. <laughs> Here's first and goal, and hard to hear at this corner. Student bodies right off your left ear. Harbaugh. discretionary timeout I'm sure look at this there's no question about it because of the noise now the student body is over on the Michigan side where they have the ball this would be one of the more difficult places in college football to be understood he's really hot Brent because he's got a charge timeout Harbaugh turned back asked for a discretionary timeout crowd noise was impossible for him to call the audible and Bo does not like being charged the timeout that's the whole key I have to admit that I have heard it louder and I think you're about to hear it louder in this situation one of the worst things you can do here with a student body is to complain about this because now they will suddenly turn up the amplifiers a couple of notches over here now, I'm not sure. We'd have to ask Jimmy Harbaugh what he was trying to do down there on the field, whether or not he could hear it all. I thought when the crowd was chanting and the ball was near midfield there that it was even louder in here. Then it was almost impossible for him to hear and that the officials were right. Now, now let's see how the student body reacts when Michigan comes up to the line of scrimmage. But the pressure falls on the Iowa team because a charge timeout and a five-yard penalty can be assessed if the crowd noise interferes, continues to interfere. That's what puts so much pressure on the referee. Ball is at the six. Iowa leading with a field goal. It's 3 nothing. Number one playing number two, as good as advertised. Rained hard here this morning, but... Then it stopped a little afternoon, drizzled some more, but has not rained since, and it has not rained since this game began. Now the official decides that he spotted the ball a little too far forward, and he moves it back about three or four inches. Now let's listen.
was a blow. George Davis, he was also there. They were ready for that, Coach. Real good battle going on between Peterson, the nose man of Iowa, Bob Tabacino. Peterson's a super football player, and Tabacino's done a nice job moving in there from guard to the center position. 6-29. Left here in the first half. Third and six in the noise level mounts. Harbaugh says, I can't hear. And this time he gets the discretionary timeout. Now, that time I did think it was louder. I thought that, again, the students had increased their volume. And I agree with the officials all three times here this afternoon on that particular play. Well, it makes it tough to play a football game. You see, Bo is... something there. What great emotion. I've got to believe when one plays two that the home field advantage can be absolutely vital. I mean, can you imagine what it would be like right now up in Ann Arbor with 105,000 children for the world? Says it all. Right? Says it all. Harbaugh, great shot of his eyes from that end zone camera. We like to run the reverse pivot down the line option off of this. He still doesn't like the crowd noise. Now the burden, as you pointed out, Era. But the clock will not start now, so there's no 25-second uh, rule imposed here. He can stand there as long as he wants until he decides that they can hear. You see, he can come back away from it. Harbaugh's father, Jack Harbaugh, the head football coach at Western Michigan, so we're dealing here with a quarterback is tuned in to the ways of football. He knew he didn't have to make a move in that situation, and he wants things quieted down here before he decides to move. Now the PA announcer will tell the crowd. Hear the whole state of Iowa right now. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not those officials out there. So they'll try again here. Harbaugh to put it up. Dross pursues him out of the pocket. He gets around, underhands it to White. White throws for the end zone. He's got the touchdown. What a move by Harbaugh. What a reaction by Harbaugh. Harbaugh to Gerald White for the touchdown. Jeff Dross had broken through. He had chased Harbaugh out of the pocket. Jim was turning the corner to the left. He had White out in front of him. And you know, Doug Flutie used to make plays like that. Boston College. Here this afternoon, it's Jimmy Harbaugh and Gillette to attempt the extra point. He nails it. And it is 7-3. So give a big round of applause to this young man right here, Jimmy Harbaugh. He sees White, the fullback, in front of him. He's wide open. No time to stop and cock the arm. Let's just get it to him. And White does the rest. Take it home for six. And Michigan leads 7-3. Era, how did this develop? Watch Jeff Cross right here, number 76, and freeze right here. Put the heat on. Harbaugh is flushed out of the pocket. And... White will slip out of the backfield. Left halfback here. Look at Dross, 76 come. Chases Harbaugh out. Watch 57 come into the frame. Right there, freeze. And Harbaugh escapes. Just push shovel ball, shovels that ball to White, who had been at left halfback, and he stretches into the end zone. Great reactions by Harbaugh. The question there, of course, the quarterback has to be so mindful of the line of scrimmage. When he comes up, he cannot be beyond it. And he was on the tightrope right there, but it was legal all the way. Now, if there has been a difference in this game so far, it has been the kicking game. It was a kickoff return, remember, by Jamie Morris that set up that touchdown. Iowa has not punted the ball well here this afternoon. Now let's 
see what Sutkowitz does with the bare foot. Hammers it down toward Harmon. Goes in the end zone. Touchback out on the 20. The Hawkeyes have the wind at their back. They're down 7-3. 606 to go. And tomorrow, a reminder, more excitement coming your way. Can't wait to hear from Big John Madden live tomorrow on Lawrence Taylor and why he's been erratic for the New York Giants. He is that monster linebacker. So we've got a big afternoon at 12.30 Eastern time. And then, of course, we'll have regional coverage. Many of you will watch the Dallas Cowboys against the Philadelphia Eagles. Believe me, the Cowboys have one of the best defenses in the NFL. Tom Landry redid that entire defense during the offseason, waiting to see how they're playing tomorrow on CBS. Here it's first and ten for the Hawkeyes, and Chuck Long gets protection. Throws the ball, complete to Harmon, and he is out of bounds near midfield. Oh, there's how dangerous he can be. 31 yards. What a beautiful throw by Long. He really laid that ball right in there. They're in double zone. I'm talking about Michigan. Long will go back into the pocket. Harmon will circle to your right. Watch this ball right on the money beyond all the defenders. Great job. Brad Cocker, number 30, knocks him out of bounds. The most accurate passer in college football. And the offensive line gives him all the time he needs. And there is Harmon behind Hicks. Finally pushed out of bounds by Cochran. But not until he got to the 49-yard line. And the Hawkeyes strike right back. Long will put it up on first down. This time going down the sideline, almost intercepted by Garland Rivers. He had Smith working a fly pattern. And the zone coverage sent Rivers rotating over there, and he saw ball. Watch here as Long gets a little bit more pressure on this defense. Hartenstein coming, Messner coming from the left side here. Great ball reaction here by Garland Rivers. Gets over just and steals the ball away from Smith. Watch the pressure here on Long. Has to throw the ball just as he gets heat from Messner and Hartenstein. Second down and 10. Harmon, who Michigan must watch, is back as the tailback. They play fake to him. Long is under pressure again. Receivers recovered off the scramble. He throws it to Ronnie. Ronnie looking for daylight. Keeps on going until he's down to the 45. You are looking at one of the premier running backs in college football. Number 31, Ronnie Harmon, is a young man who suffered a broken leg last year against Wisconsin. His mother, Jackie Harmon, was watching back at home on television when that injury occurred. She was beside herself until she got the telephone call that her young running back was going to be all right. Jackie, of course, is watching this action today, and she has to be, oh, ever so proud of what Ronnie is accomplishing here. Third and six. Split backs this time. Hudson throws the block. And that time he had to throw low, and Smith tried to scoop it up, but the official said it skipped off the carpet. One of the few times that I've seen Long, right there in your picture, throw the ball off balance and not get it there. He just seems to be accurate any time, any position that he's in. That's one of the few times. Northwestern upsetting Wisconsin this afternoon. And Ohio State a winner. So if you look at some of the other scores, a reminder that we will have the Buckeyes again next Saturday on CBS against Minnesota. Lou Holtz, how's he doing up at Minnesota? What are his plans? We'll find out next week. Kostrovala. Back to punt again. This time he bobbles the snap and finally gets it off. Campbell lets it bounce. It gets an Iowa bounce down inside the five, and it is surrounded by Hawkeyes. It's 7-3. Michigan with the lead. We'll be right back in just a moment. Stadium, Iowa City, Iowa. The Hawkeyes rank number one, playing the number two team in the nation, Michigan. Michigan leading 7-3, but it was Iowa that scored first. Holtland with a 35-yard field goal, and the Hawkeyes had the lead after they did not give Helverson the touchdown. Then this occurred. Jamie Morris busted one up the middle. 63 yards, he returned it before Iowa could finally bring him down. And that set up the Michigan Wolverine touchdown. It was the lateral from Harbaugh to White. The fullback did the rest and goes down as a six-yard touchdown pass, 7-3.
Now, as the Hawkeyes down that ball inside the five, Jimmy Harbaugh will bring up what figures to be a very conservative offense, one trying to get holes in the interior line, get a first down, and get out of trouble right now. It'll be the fullback and White out across the five-yard line. Peterson was veering to the field, and those tackle right over Tavacino. Tavacino blocked him across the hole, but good support from the rest of the Hawkeyes. Second down, seven from the six. Some more scores, and oh, how Jerry Faust needed that one, didn't he? Yeah, that was a good one to win. Second and seven. To the weak side, and Morris cut back to the middle. And Jeff Frost, whoa, oh, is he a good-looking football player? Last year, because of an injury to Peterson, he also played nose guard. As you check in on some of the other scores of games played this afternoon, and of course at halftime, we'll go back to New York. Jim Nance and Pat Hayden will be bringing you the Prudential College football report. Third and five. Backs are split. Harbaugh to throw. Looking for the first down. Comes to the sideline incomplete. He wanted Jamie Morris. George Millett had dropped off into pass coverage. And he stayed right with Morris. I was surprised that both put the ball up at this point in the game, or I should say, from that field position. You see Millett right there. The ball is overthrown by Harbaugh anyway, so they've got to kick from deep in their own territory. You would have thought safe pass, but if Millett had intercepted it, I would have loved to have seen Bo's expression on the sideline. Here's the punt from the end zone. Robbins gets it out. Happel. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Now we've got 317 to go in the first half. Iowa is about to try to seize the lead. We'll be right back in Iowa City to see if the Michigan defense can hold. On the NFL Today, a report on the Rams' big play defense. John Madden on what's happened to Lawrence Taylor and Pete Rose on the World Series tomorrow on CBS Sports. Gary Mola. Checking with his defense. You know, Jamie Morris's kickoff return. Does it take you back in time when number one played number two in another year? 1971, Nebraska and Oklahoma. As good a football game as you'd ever want to see. The Sooners were back to punt. The great Johnny Rogers was going to return it for Nebraska. Watch this Sooner get a hand on him right away. Greg Pruitt cannot bring him down, and Johnny Rogers does the rest. Breaking free, a 72-yard return for a touchdown as these two great teams battled back and forth. Fullback Jeff Kinney scoring four touchdowns. The winner came with 138 left. That was 35-31. Here today, it's one and two. Meanwhile, Oklahoma in the third period trailing a passing quarterback, 14-7. And Nebraska beating Missouri, but only by eight. So there were some who said Oklahoma should be one, but they had not yet faced a passer like Testaverde. So we'll find out how that one unfolds. Here it is, the Hawkeyes trying to get into the end zone late in the first half. Long with time, down the sideline to Harmon. Harmon was going to step out of bounds. He saw the defense with allowing three more yards. He took it, 25-yard game. You could see that the defense of Michigan was responding to Chuck Long's eyes. He's looking up the field, and the defense is zoning. Look at him looking right up the field. Then at the last second, he turns and throws to Harmon, and there's no one over there because of the defensive response of the, of the Michigan secondary to Long looking down the field. Harmon has touched the ball 17 times here in the first half. He's responsible for 96 yards of offense. And here he is with his 18th time, a carry. Coming behind the right side of the line. Bo Schembechler telling us last night, the man we must stop is Ronnie Harmon. Well, he's getting every opportunity, but Harmon is making the most of it. Bo believes that Harmon is as good as any running back this side of Bo Jackson, that he belongs up there with the elites right now in college football. 
you're a pro scout, you have to be drooling about the way he stops and starts on a dime. It's second and six. Split backs, long to throw it. Comes back to the right. He's got a man open. It was Helverson inside the 10 yard line. First down for the Hawkeyes. What an accurate passer he is. Oh, a great job by Long throwing between three defenders that time. Number 66, you see Hammerstein right here, cannot get by. Oh, that was a great job. Let's, here's Hammerstein right here, catch number 51. I'm sorry, number 70. Right there is blocking on Hammerstein. Will not even let him in there. Great job by Kratz, who's replacing injured O'Brien. Long on the game is 12 of 18 for 147. Here comes Harmon, Bush with a block, tries to get outside and could not. Well defended. Mallory, and that is Doug Mallory. The defensive back and Jeff Akers sealed him up. Now, Doug Mallory comes into that secondary. They have like five starters back there. And then you look at the statistics at the end of the game, and even though Doug doesn't start, he frequently is amongst the leaders in tackles. The two Mallorys, of course, are the sons of the Indiana coach. Now, Mike Mallory had to leave for a moment. He's going over to the sideline. He's lost a shoe. Number 42 has gone over to the sideline. And Michigan has had to use its last time out because of that. They could not afford to be without their key linebacker. And we'll be right back in Iowa City in a moment. Live at Kinnick Stadium, Iowa City. 7-3 Michigan era. This is a great moment in this football game. It really is because the Michigan defense, which has yielded just one touchdown, and this is their sixth game, the second quarter of their sixth game, they have a lot of motivation to keep Iowa out of there, but Long is awful tough to keep out. They've stopped them thus far and held them to a field goal, but this is going to be tough, I think, for the Wolverines. Second and ten, ball at the ten. Harmon looking like he wanted to throw that time. You bet he was, and he won't get it off, but he stays on his feet, and he's got to be careful before he fumbles the ball. Kind of a surprising call there where they had Harmon on a really wanted to throw the football off of a sweep. But the most dangerous passer they have, obviously, is Long. Yeah, why would you go to second best here, Coach? Well, maybe they thought they were going to be man, and man, man on man. You can see here as he drops back just a little way, He's looking for the receiver, cannot find him, but he uses good judgment at this point not to give the ball away. Oh, he fumbled the ball. Got back on it, too. Now it's third and 15 as a result of that play. Long gets it out to Harmon, eludes a tackler, gets inside the 10-yard line. Now we're down to 30 seconds to go. The Hawkeyes still have a couple of timeouts. They are down to fourth down, so apparently they will have to settle for their second field goal. Hotland, number seven, huddling over with a couple of the assistant coaches. And Hayden will wisely use a timeout as he brings the clock down. He doesn't want to see Jamie Morris running back another kickoff in this situation if he can avoid it. So he brought it down to four seconds. So we're watching two Big Ten teams here, Iowa and Michigan. Let's take a look at the entire Big Ten Conference. Rob Holton preparing to attempt his second field goal. He is responsible for their only points here this afternoon. This will be a 27-yarder. Mark Vlasic, the backup quarterback, will put it down for the Hawkeyes. Time running out here in the first half. Holton's kick is good as time runs out. So that great Michigan defense doesn't give up a touchdown. They yield two field goals. The Wolverines get a touchdown as Jamie Morris returns a kickoff 60 yards. Then Jim Harbaugh comes up with a Doug Flutie play. The old underhand shovel pass and fullback Cheryl White does the rest. It's as good as advertised. One versus two. We'll come right back after this message and a word from your local station. 
CBS Sports coverage of college football will continue after this word from your local station. This is CBS. CBS Sports presents the Prudential College Football Report, sponsored by the Prudential. Offering a full range of insurance and financial services. The Prudential, the rock, it's strong, it's on the move, it's bigger than life. Welcome back to the College Football Report on CBS. I'm Jim Dance along with Pat Hayden. And Pat, this game, everything it was built up to be, had it not been for that controversial play, the Hawkeyes could be in front here at halftime. Well, Hayden Fry is fuming and rightfully so. It was a bad call. Chuck Long was looking for Scott Halverson, his uh, wide receiver there. Now, they ruled him out of bounds. He does scramble around. This is what he does so well, Chuck Long. That's why he is a Heisman Trophy candidate. Now, that, that was ruled out of bounds, but on a second look, you're going to see that Halverson has one foot in, which is all you need in college football. Now, Iowa did score a field goal here, Jim, but a four-point differential can mean a lot against a tough, tough Michigan defense. Michigan still has not allowed a touchdown in this game. No PAT on the season. They have not given up a point after touchdown because the one they gave up against Wisconsin, they did not make the extra point. All right, let's get in uh, with the rest of the top ten scores, and that includes uh, number three, Oklahoma, who right now are finding some real troubled times at home. They're behind Miami of Florida 14-7, to but more importantly, quarterback Troy Aikman has a broken left ankle in that game. He'll be out probably for the rest of the regular season, which means the Sooners' wishbone offense will be directed by an untested freshman the rest of the regular season. Number four, Arkansas, point better than Texas as they uh, start the third quarter. Fifth-ranked Florida, 45 zip over southwest Louisiana. Kerwin Bell threw for three touchdowns. Syracuse almost pulled off the upset of the day against Penn State. That final 24-20 for the Nittany Lions. Don McPherson of the Orangemen goes long to Mike Seattle. And the touchdown had the Orangemen in front 20-17 to in the fourth quarter. Joe Paterno's team has won every game this year, and every one by seven points or less. So they know how to pull them out. Here, John Schaefer to Steve Smith for the winning touchdown, and the finals 24-20, to and the Nittany Lions remain unbeaten on the year. Nebraska had a scare against Missouri, 28-20. to One touchdown on the day for the Cornhuskers. They had seven field goals from number one, Dale Klein. That ties an NCAA record by Mike Prindle of Western Michigan. Seven field goals by Clyde, and Nebraska beats the winless Missouri Tigers 28-20. to Eighth-ranked Auburn also could be an upset victim today. They're trailing Georgia Tech 14-7. to John Dewberry, the quarterback for the Yellow Jackets, goes to Gary Lee, who makes a nice grab. Gets way down there in Auburn territory. Two plays later, Jerry Mays takes it in. He has scored two touchdowns for Georgia Tech, and they lead Auburn right now 14-7. to What kind of day is Bo Jackson having? Well, 14 now? carries, 87 yards, which is not a big numbers for him, but think about their play on artificial services, uh, surface. Over the last uh, two years, they're 0-5, while they're 13-0 and on, on natural grass. Give some credit to Don Lindsay, the defensive coordinator at Georgia Tech, too. That's an amazing stat. All right, rounding out the top 10, ninth-ranked BYU will play New Mexico later on tonight. The Cougars right now sidelined with their two excellent wide receivers, Mark Bellini and Glenn Kozlowski, although Kozlowski might play tonight against the Lobos. And 10th ranked Air Force, 14 to 13 over Colorado State. They've just started the third quarter. Air Force uh, also has a 60-yard field goal in that game against the Rams. The good in the air, right? Yeah, I see. Okay, we have some other top 20 uh, scores for you in a shootout at Ohio State. They win 41 to 27 over Purdue. Keith Byers was back, rushed for 106 yards, spoiled an effort by Jim Everett, 497 yards for Jimmy Everett there. And how about Tennessee and Alabama in an SEC matchup? 16 to 14, Tennessee wins that one. That's their fourth straight over Alabama. Now it was a rough day for Tony Robinson. Had it to come out of the game three different times. Here's some of the reason why. He is sacked by Kurt Jarvis. Boom, that's where he hurt his knee. The coach felt that he'll be out for the rest of the season. Obviously, he left the game there on crutches. Mike Shula tries to break the Crimson Tide back. He finds Bobby Humphrey for 19 yards. That cut the score to 16 to 14. Again, Shula, who had only thrown one interception coming into today's game, throws his second of the day to Dale Jones, number 54, and Tennessee wins 16 to 14 in a big SEC matchup. How about Georgia and Vanderbilt? That was a final 13 to 13 tie. That one is a surprise, and also a surprise, Washington State is leading UCLA 24 to 17 in the second quarter, but UCLA is a strong second half team. And Notre Dame over Army, 24 to 10. But Jim, even in spite of that uh, win today, I still think we're gonna find a new coach at Notre Dame next year. But Alan Pinkett had a big day, became their all-time leading rusher, past Vegas Ferguson. 
Suppose uh, Notre Dame has a tough schedule the rest of the way. Do you think if they ran into another couple of losses, do you think Faust would be out before the end of the season? Well, the administration will not do that now. They live with them this long, and I admire them for doing that. But if there's going to be some sort of uh, resignation or change now, it's going to have to come from Jerry Faust himself. All right, Pat, we have some updates back into uh, the top ten, including that uh, Oklahoma-Miami of Florida game. The Hurricane has added a field goal. They're up by ten over the Sooners. And Texas and Arkansas also updated Longhorns with their third field goal of the game, and they're now in front of the Razorbacks by two. Quickly, some other scores. Northwestern, last-second field goal, beat Wisconsin 17-14, to and Kansas leads Kansas State 38-0 in the third quarter. Still ahead, Pat and I will look at some of this season's surprises in the Big Ten, and we'll continue with highlights and scores from around the country here on the College Football Report. along with Pat Hayden back at our New York studios. You know, the team that really surprises me this year in the East is Rutgers. They opened up their season at Florida and tied the highly rated Gators 28 all. But since that time, they have dropped five games in a row, including a 38-10 drubbing at the hands of the Pittsburgh Panthers today. Elsewhere, West Virginia made it six straight over Boston College, 13 to six. Navy 56 to 14 over Lafayette. Napoleon McCallum had three touchdowns. Yale 28 to 12 over Columbia. Harvard 17 to seven over Dartmouth. And it was Brown 22, Cornell nothing for Cornell. They have now started their season 0-5, another team that has to be disappointed. Jim, in the South, we have some good ACC matchups, including a game between interstate rivals, North Carolina and North Carolina State. Earl Winfield accounted for all the Tar Heels points. Two touchdowns receiving and one rushing. They win 21-14. Maryland, their 13th straight ACC wins 26-3 over Wake Forest. And Clemson evens their record at three with a 21-9 win over Duke. And in an upset, Virginia Tech beats Virginia 28-10 after trailing 10-0. Boy, that surprises me. You know, back in the Midwest, in the Big Ten, Minnesota is tied for the lead in the Big Ten. We're going to be talking about that more later on here at halftime. Today, the Gophers 22-7 over Indiana. Illinois scored the final 23 points to beat Michigan State by 13. Bowling Green 23 to 18 over Central Michigan. Quarterback Brian McClure set an NCAA record for most career completions, breaking the mark of Duke's Ben Bennett. He also tied John Elway's mark of 200-yard passing games with his 29th career 200-plus passing game. And Rice, a winner for the second straight week. They win by two points over Texas Tech. Baseball tonight, the World Series will get underway. The I-70 World Series, that is weather permitting. There is a 40% chance of rain at this time. John Tudor will start for the Cardinals, Danny Jackson on the mound for the Royals. And when we come back, Pat and I will assess the Big Ten and the SEC at midseason. You're watching the College Football Report on CBS where the scores continue from across the country. They did not complete a pass today. However, they rushed for over 340 yards. Valdez Baylor from eight yards out got the Golden Gophers on the board, seven to nothing. Later on a fourth and goal at the Indiana two, the score 12 to nothing. This was the clincher. Gary Couch takes it in. And that final was 22 to seven for Minnesota over the Hoosiers. That makes them five and one now, the Gophers. And next week, they'll be playing Ohio State, a game you'll see here on CBS. And what's incredible to me, Pat, is that going into the last weekend of October, Minnesota is still on the ro uh, run for the Roses. Well, as we look at the overall records of the Big Ten, what strikes me is the quality of the conference from top to bottom. You know, they're 24 and six in nine conference play, but the real test comes in bowl season where they've been miserable the last few years, one in five a year ago. They want to make a statement they're gonna have to win some bowl games. Another Another conference that is wide open right now and uh, really has a lot of good teams is the Southeastern Conference. Well, I think it's the toughest conference in the country. They are 23-5-3 against non-conference competition. Tough places to play there. That's what that makes that conference interesting. LSU, Tennessee, Georgia, tough to win on the road in the SEC. Means we're in store for a great second half of the college football season. Coming up next, the start of the second half of the game. And you're watching the College Football Report here on CBS.
The Prudential College Football Report has been sponsored by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and financial services. The Prudential, the rock. It's strong, it's on the move, it's bigger than life. And after the game, but the holiday end at 15:01. Only one point separates number one Iowa from number two Michigan, and we're at the half. And you know, Eric Parsegan, in fairness, we must point out that the Hawkeyes appeared to have a touchdown taken away from them. Really was a bad break because the replays show quite clearly that Halverson was in. You see here Long throwing the ball. Watch the left foot of Halverson. It is inbounds. One foot is inbounds. He has possession of the football. This score should be 10-7 rather than 7-6. They settle for the field goal. Holtland from 35 yards. Then the kickoff and Jamie Morris turned on the afterburners. We see the importance of the kicking game once again as you see great blocking for Jamie Morris and he breaks out of that pocket. He goes 63 yards and this return led to the lone touchdown that's been scored in this football game. And it was a beautiful touchdown because era it happens on front lawns and neighborhood parks every Saturday morning. A quarterback little extemporaneously comes up with something as you will see the fullback say give me the ball Jimmy give me the ball and so he does no time to stop and throw a pretty pass let's get the job done and don't overlook the effort that White came up with right there to get the ball into the end zone but I really think the key man continues to be Ronnie Harmon what he can do offensively and what Michigan must do defensively Brent you're exactly right Harmon has carried the ball 16 times he's only made 35 yards but the thing that is really important you watch Mark Hartenstein the left tackle, a second one from the bottom on the line. He'll give a slip, he'll give a slip uh, rush right here to the defender. Then watch the number of Michigan men that pursue to Harmon once he has the ball. There's Hartenstein forcing Harmon deep. Okay, now there's one, Garland Rivers, number 13. Now watch the white shirts that come into this picture as Harmon starts to break away from that. They've done an excellent job on him. Mm, hard for one to beat 11. What do you think about the second half? Well, Brandon, looking at the statistics, I don't think the second half bodes well for Michigan because they have not been able to do the thing they want to do, maintain possession of the ball. Iowa has had the ball 20 minutes, almost 20 minutes, while Michigan has just had it 10. And you cannot give Chuck Long that many opportunities without him putting some points on the board. I think that's the biggest problem Michigan faces in the second half. I'm a defensive guy myself. I think Garland Rivers or somebody will come up with an interception and put this one away for Bo, but what do I know? We're going to come back and find out. Chuck Long and the Iowa Hawkeyes, can they pull it out and stay number one? We're about to find out. CBS Sports presents College Football, sponsored by Chevrolet. It's 1986 at your Chevy dealers now. Live today's Chevy. Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts. And by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Evening beginning to descend on Iowa City, Iowa. It's number one and number two and 30 minutes of football remain and then one of these teams will be secure as number one because Oklahoma is having some trouble this afternoon and the other one is destined to slip. 24 to 7, the Hurricanes, led by Benny Testaverde. And oh, how Oklahoma missed that nose guard today. There's the kickoff on the ground to a short man. Wiltshire picks it up, bang down hard at the 29 yard line. So, how do our tailbacks compare here? Well, Ronnie Harmon has rushed for only 35, but look at his receptions for Jamie Morris. It is that one 60 yard return that set up their touchdown. The quarterbacks, Chuck Long has done everything except get the ball in the end zone, and he appeared to do that once, but it was taken away from him. Jimmy Harbaugh has thrown one touchdown pass and thrown for 19 yards. So it is first down, and now we'll see, Era, if Bo Schimbeckler's Wolverine offense can get something going. Here comes Jimmy Harbaugh to the line. From the eye, they will attack. Morse. Banging straight ahead. John Breeze. A 
number 57 there in the middle of that Hawkeye defense, bringing him down, but he gained a good three yards. I think that Michigan is going to have to grind out some first downs. The possession in the first half is so one-sided with Iowa having the ball 20 minutes. Chuck Long is dangerous. They can't afford to do it. Look at the difference in the total offense. Bob Perryman is now in at fullback for the Wolverines. He is there in front of Morris. Play fake. Harbaugh. He'll run to the right. Throw back. Deflected. Cattis diving catch. First down at the 47-yard line. A brilliant reception off a tip. It was a great catch here by Cattis. This is a good misdirection pass. And you'll see the fullback, number 37, who's Perryman, is wide open. I thought Harbaugh was going to throw him. You don't see him to the right there. Look at that catch by Caddis. He's been playing great all year. Larry Station just got a hand on that ball. Harbaugh releasing it. Station rose up high. Left-handed. Caddis with marvelous concentration. 14-yard gain. First down. Balls at the 46. Kolasar flanked to the left, trying to hear the signal. They'll run Morris off the right side. And the Hawkeyes are not yielding a thing here on first down. This makes it very tough for an offense when you can't gain four or five yards on a first down, Coach. The Iowa defense is much improved over two weeks ago when Michigan State was here and we were able to do that game. They yielded a lot of yardage in that football game, but they really have improved. Now, this makes Michigan somewhat predictable. They'll split the backs. The corners back up about seven yards off the wide receivers. Davis shows blitz and then backs off. He drops the screen. Morris, short of a first down. Jay Norvell and Kenny Sims. They come over on the stop for the Hawkeyes, and so if they had gained four or five yards on first down, they would have had another first down. But because they were so far back, now they must face a third and two coach. I think Bowl probably said at halftime, we've got to keep possession of the football, keep the pressure off of our defense. We've got to throw the ball. We've got to take some chances in the second half, and they certainly have with a screen and a pass in this ball game. A record crowd in Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Just as many more would have loved to have been here. The fake to Perryman. Harbaugh keeps it. Dives back in. And he appears to be short of the first down. Jeff Brooks, number 76, will be down there near the bottom of that. And there's the signal by Station, who also helped out, over to the sideline. That they'll have fourth and one. And now Monty Robbins comes into the game to punt. Apple and Smith retreat deep for the Hawkeyes. Robbins would like to bury the Hawks inside the 10 here if he can. A bad snap. Picks it up on the bounce. Gets it off. Signal fair catches a bluff. And Brad Cochran touched the ball but going on into the end zone. They'll bring it out. 20-yard line. Cochran really got down on coverage that time, didn't he? Well, next week, come along with us again. CBS Sports will take you to the Metrodome. It'll be the Buckeyes of Ohio State against the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Lou Holtz has done a terrific job with that team. They win again today. The Buckeyes come from behind. How will Keith Byers do? Here are Hayden Fry and Ronnie Harmon. Monty Robbins did a terrific job of fielding the bad snap. That ball bounced back there, and he made a nice catch of it and got the punt away. You can thank the artificial turf to get that true bounce. Chuck Long coming to the right, throws back across the green to Happel. And Bill Happel has caught his fifth pass of the afternoon. It's an 18-yard gain out to the 37. Boy, is he cool back there, and I'm talking about number 16, Chuck Long. There's Happel, number 40. Watch how cool Long is. He just drops back, rolls out to the right, looks down the right side, then turns back, finds Happel. Look at him throw the ball right there on the money. He is really a great quarterback. The biggest decision in Iowa football was when Long decided to stay. He hands it off to Harmon, who gets about a yard. Mike Mallory, 42, met him. 
That decision that Chuck Long faced at the end of last season, whether to take the money and sign with an NFL team or hang in because he had the fifth year of eligibility. Watch the nose guard, number 58, 56, get blocked, and the linebacker step right up in there. Great job. That's Mallory, number 42, and Moeller, 49. Second and nine. Long under pressure, and this time he is dropped. Akers coming in from that outside linebacking spot. One way to stop the great passer. Take well, him down before he can get it off, and that's the first sack by the Wolverines. Exactly right, Brent. The best pass defense in the world is to get to the passer before he throws it, particularly in the case of Chuck Long, who is really an accurate thrower. We've got 10 minutes, 10 seconds left. Quarter number three, Michigan leading Iowa, 7-6. Long pulls out. This time the line holds. Goes to the sideline. Happel working right there, complete near midfield. 19-yard gain. Bill Happel won't outrun anybody. He won't win any strength contests. He's not Mr. Universe. But folks, when you want a receiver open, send Billy Happel on that out pattern. And watch him keep those feet inbounds, make a catch, and then get out. 48-yard line, a first down for the Hawkeyes. Chuck Long made that decision to stay here with Iowa on February 5th. Now he faces the greatest challenge he's looked at this year, and that is that defense. Ocean Beckham has put together Michigan. It's Harmon. Harmon tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Mike Hammerstein got a hand on him. Gained a couple more yards. Michigan defense is doing a good job on Harmon, number 31 there. But there is the man right there that is the big problem to the Wolverines, number 16, Chuck Long. He took out an insurance policy of a million dollars on his career as a football player. Second and seven, ball at the 49. Play fake by Long. He's got time, drops it off in the middle to Harmon. Harmon comes around the umpire inside the 40-yard line. First down for Iowa. Fred Bush with a great block. 11 more yards for Harmon on a pass from Chuck Long. Schimbeckler must be fretting about Long. You see, Harmon just fakes the tailback action, just leaks through. Long does not find any deep receivers, and he gives it to his most dangerous runner. They hand it off to Harmon, looking for daylight, and he is brought down. That was Jeff Akers. Not by Jeff Akers. 33. Akers is playing a whale of a football game. He's been in on that one sack, and he has stopped the he stopped Harmon several times. The scrimmage, the Michigan 34. Second down, six for the Hawks. some other scores from the top 20 today. Sooners in deep trouble and how about Texas? The Cotton Bowl could be on the line in that one. Long pulls out. Waits comes back to Happel at the 30-yard line. He is short of the first down, however. Great catch by Happel. Penn State hanging on. They trailed at one point in that game. Nebraska wins, but only by eight over Missouri. And in the third, Georgia Tech leading Auburn and Bo Jackson. And the Air Force off to a great season, but facing pressure today. All right, here's third and two. First down spot, Aaron. It'll depend on where they spot the ball. Got it, got it. And the crowd will tell you just that. Well, Aaron's so 
far this Michigan defense has bent, but they have not broken. But you can't put them under pressure all afternoon. 20 minutes in the first half, and it looks like it might be 20 minutes in the second half. Split backs. Apples working from the short side. Long comes underneath, incomplete. Wanted his tight end that time, Mike Flagg, number 86, and Long missed it. Chuck Long from Wheaton, Illinois, and there's his daddy and Andy, his brother there, and Joan and Charles Long, and they couldn't be prouder of a son than Chuck Long. And 10. It's the fullback Hudson out behind the middle. To about the 23 yard line. And the official quickly steps in there. Stop by Mike Mallory. So Mike Peter Mallory Mallory's. in on another stop. Try to break Good Hudson down. through here. Figuring the wish Michigan defense will go for Harmon. But you can see the interior of that Michigan defensive line is not yielding yardage very well. Much, that was such much. a good picture of Mallory showing you what a great college linebacker has to do. Get the blocker off the body right now. So many of these youngsters get pinned down by a blocker, but not Mallory. He shed him so he could make the tackle. Long, throw sideline, intercepted by Heron. Peter Heron picks it off, and he's got it at the nine-yard line. Bend and bend and bend some more, but don't break. That's the story of this group, and they're as good as anybody you ever want to see. Chuck Long's mother can understand now. That is. That really was a big, big interception because this is third down. Dieter Heron drops off into the flat. You see Long throwing the ball here, and what he gives away, not only the ball and the interception, but three points that would have put him ahead nine to seven. Mark Mesner set up that interception with penetration. We'll be right back. The first place Cowboys renew their heated rivalry with the Eagles or see the Redskins take on the Giants among the regional games tomorrow on CBS Sports. And prior to those games, the NFL today, 12.30 Eastern time. Big day for you. Irv Cross on the best offense is John Madden and Pete Rose about the first game of the World Series. 6.33 to go in the third. Michigan's offense trying to eat up some precious minutes and get something going. It's only a one-point Wolverine lead. Colasar in motion. He runs the tailback Wiltshire. Thomas Wiltshire had checked back in. And he got out near the 14-yard line. Millet, 98, helping out on that tackle. Watch John Vitale, the left guard, just below the center right here. Double teams on Peterson right there. Knocks him out of there. That is Mike Krause. I'm sorry, the strong side was to the left. Mike Krause, 51, does it. Now Bob Perryman is in at fullback, and they split Wiltshire and Perryman. Throw on second down. Over the middle, and Jokic, number 84, wraps it up at the 29-yard line of first down. Something Michigan badly needed with that 15-yard gain. I think Bo needs, I think he knows he needs to take chances down here. You see Harbaugh dropping right straight back into the pocket. Gets good protection here. He has plenty of time. Good throw to Jokic right there. He's well covered there by Devon Mitchell, but he hangs on to the ball. First down for the Wolverines. So the former basketball player, the valuable 14 yards. It is out near the 30. Gerald White back at fullback, and he's got it right straight ahead. Out to the 35-yard line, Larry Station. Number 36 hauls him down right there. But the Michigan offense right now is throwing some pop off the ball there. Right, Clay Miller that time, the right tackle, really blocked Jeff Drost. Jim Beckler's staff, full of experience. This for Bo, of course, is such a tremendous season personally. Coming back from his worst season ever. You saw Perriman bring the play in from the sideline. He's the fullback in this eye. 
that they'll try to run Wilson, and the Hawkeyes were ready. The ends in the Iowa defense have played better here today, much better than they did against Michigan State. This is just as uh, we were told yesterday that the defense was improving steadily. They're young. They lost seven to eight starters from a year ago, and it's tough to build a defense. But they really have improved in two weeks, and they really played that particular tailback off tackle about that uh, Michigan ran exceptionally well. Millet, the right defensive end, number 98. They've challenged him repeatedly here today. Polisar in motion. A fake. Harbaugh comes back, dropped by Wilcher. He had the first down, began to turn, should have caught it for the Wolverines, cannot hold on, and Monty Robbins will have to punt. You see Harbaugh just off the tailback action. Wilshire just sneaks right on through. Harbaugh wants to run, then he sees Wilshire open, and he should have cut the football, but he wanted to run before he caught it. Just turned around and said, look at all that daylight, and took his eye off the ball for a moment and wound up costing them a valuable first down. Now it's Robbins to punt it again. Gets this one down toward Happel, signaling fair catch. Wraps it up at the 24-yard line. Four minutes to go in the third period. It's a 41-yard punt. You're watching number one and number two. Number one trails by a point. There's a very special story involving the Long family whom you met just a short time ago. And I had an opportunity to talk to Chuck Long about his family as you see Charles Jones and his brother Andy. Well, uh, you know, my brother is truly a great inspiration to me because uh, he was born with cerebral palsy. And, and I know that, you know, he, as a brother, he'd give anything to, to be in my shoes. He'd, be, he'd give anything to be normal. You know, he comes to all the ball games and, and he's very special to me. He's always in my prayers and my thoughts uh, during each game. And, you know, I just know that uh, after after a victory, even after a loss, when he's smiling after, at me, you know, when I come out of lock, when he just he means so much to me, and uh, he, he's just a great inspiration as far as that's concerned. That's Chuck Long, the human being. First and ten. Complete the half. Hour. Billy breaks a tackle and gets out beyond the 35. First down before Gant finally brings him down. And again, Long starts the mounted drive. Another 14 yards there. One of their favorite patterns, and Happel is a tremendous athlete. I don't think he's had a bad game. There he is with the, right here now, he should have been knocked down for about a two or three yard gain. And look at him keep his balance and come upfield for a 14 yard gain. First and ten for the Hawkeyes. The ball is at the 38. Long off the draw. Runs Harmon. Daylight in the middle. Great call by the Hawkeyes. Down to the 48-yard line. Another first down on a 14-yard game. Frank, Michigan gives about 220 yards a game, and already Iowa's exceeded that by about 40 yards. Look at Harmon, a perfect draw. And they get the linebackers blocked. You can see Moeller, 49, blocked. And finally, Doug Mallory comes in number eight to make the play along with help from uh, Ivan Hicks. David Hudson in at fullback through a key block that time on the draw for Harmon. They fake Harmon. Long looking for an open receiver. Harmon's there underneath, and he drops the ball. So Ronnie Harmon is one of the great running backs in college football. There's another one. Pat Hayden, tell us about him. Well, Brent, Bo Schimbeckler's having a good afternoon, but another Bo, Bo Jackson, is having a Heisman Trophy afternoon. Watch this run, 76 yards when Auburn really needed it. They were trailing here, but they go on top 17 to 14. By the way, he runs, you'd think he, the Heisman Trophy was waiting for him. Let's go back to Brent Nero. All right, and Chuck Long is trying to respond to that challenge and climb up there in contention if he can. And again, the draw with Harmon. Cuts back against the grain, carries a tackler inside the 40-yard line. Close again to a first down. Excellent change of pace on the part of the offense of Iowa. 
Long was throwing the ball, throwing the ball. Now they're coming back, faking the pass, slipping the ball to Harmon. Two draws have really paid off. As you see, Hudson, number 20, came through and made a nice lead block. You know, Hudson is emerging here this afternoon as a potential star in this Hawkeye attack. He is out of the state of Texas, 6'2", 227, and of course Hayden Fry grew up down there, down in Odessa, Texas. He was the captain of a high school football team that won the state championship before he went on to Baylor. And then, of course, he was the head coach after an assistantship at Arkansas of SMU and North Texas State before coming here and lifting this Hawkeye program like a phoenix out of the ashes. He has taken the Hawkeyes to a bowl game in each of the last four years. So from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa, along with Eric Parsegan, I'm Brent Musburger. 2.45 to go in the third. Number two, Michigan leads number one Iowa seven to six as Chuck Long puts his helmet down and goes for the first down. Era, it is interesting when you're on your own field and of course the chain gang is associated with the university. In close calls like that, I saw the man who's holding the first down marker signal across the field by moving the stick. That allows the Iowa coaches to have just a few more precious seconds to think about what they want to do on first down. That's like the timer, you know, when you're playing basketball with the guys over there and you need a couple extra seconds or something, he can squeeze it out. Here's Harmon sweeping to the left for the Hawkeyes. Michigan strings the play out. Brad Cochran finally rides him out of bounds there near the 35-yard line. And of course, there are no lights here at Kinnick Stadium, so they brought in the portables. And the field is illuminated for the conclusion of this game. We are now after 5 o'clock here in Iowa. It has been an overcast, cloudy weekend. Rained heavily yesterday, throughout the evening, and again this morning. But somebody knew number one was playing number two. And the rain stopped and the bad weather is held off. As soon as they told us that the sun was shining in Waterloo, coach, I knew we were all right. <laughs> Second and about seven. Long back under pressure. Drops it off to Hudson, the fullback. Hudson ridden down, but he appeared to have the first down as Akers put a saddle on him, and Hudson said, let's go a few more yards. Long is able to hit his third and fourth choices on passes. He comes back here, faking the, the play to Harmon. Then they slip on through. Both Hudson and Harmon go through. Long is patient with it. He finds Hudson right there, number 20, and he is a load. He's tough to bring down. Excellent play by the Iowa Hawks. First and ten. Can Long get the ball in again? Well, he's found a fullback. David Hudson, only a sophomore. Set in front of Harmon. They let Hudson try it. He breaks another tackle at the line of scrimmage. And I believe they had him wrapped up there, Billy Harris, and he got away from him. Long is 19 for 28, 227 yards with that one interception. On their last possession that uh, robbed them at least of a, a three-pointer to take the lead. But they're back down in not only field goal position, but they're challenging here with second down and about seven. Now, the wind is really not too much of a factor. I should point out they do have whatever exists at their back, however. The time running out here in the third quarter. Long. Over the middle. Complete the flag to tight end. Near the 20 yard line, but short of that first down. We got that same situation coming up, third down and short. Well, we've got a season premiere coming for you next weekend on CBS Sports the Philadelphia 76ers and the New York Knicks. And some of you are saying, so what? Well, it's not so what. That's Patrick Ewing's debut. You want to see him in action Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. It's Ewing and the Knicks against Mo Malone and the Sixers. And here in Iowa City, we've come to the end of the third. Michigan 7, Iowa 6. Number one and number two have come down to the last 15 minutes. 
CBS Sports presents College Football, sponsored by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Visa, accepted worldwide for shopping, dining, and travel. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And by Radio Shack, a division of Tandy Corporation. Fifteen minutes to go in the final quarter. It's one against two. And here it is third and three. And the best offense fumble on the exchange. A fumble at the line of scrimmage. Long was pulling out, did not have the football. And because of that, they'll have to send the field goal team onto the field. They recovered it right away. Senlager and Long. Long was looking out to the left, getting ready to take the exchange. He backs out, and the ball came up through the hands, struck him, gets back down on the carpet. But Iowa holds on. And now an important field goal. 36-yard attempt. Holton's kick is up. It's good. Iowa leads. And again, the Michigan defense does not surrender a touchdown. They played 23 quarters. Have the Wolverines on defense, and they've given up only one touchdown all season long. But the Hawkeye fans are celebrating right now because that third field goal by Hopeland just moved Iowa into the lead 9-7. And Vlasic said, way to go, big fella. Let's hold on now. It's 9-7. And he has made 12 out of 14, which is not a shabby percentage. Segan said the big point in this game is the fact that Michigan's defense has been on the field too long against Hayden Fry's offense. There's the playing time, and you can see Michigan out on that field almost twice as long defensively as Iowa. Has to take its toll. I think it's a tribute to the Iowa defense, which is much improved and doing an excellent job. Kennan to White, who's one of the short men, and this is pretty good field position. So again, Iowa is troubled by that kicking game. Holtland's sore leg and they're not kicking him off. So we got great defense here this afternoon. You remember another one versus two? Sure you do. It was these two teams, 1979. Penn State against Alabama. And now, here comes Penn State. Mike Gooman, lit head on by Barry Krause and thrown back. Alabama, number two, prevails over Penn State, number one. 14-7, the final. And here, Another tough defensive game. Three field goals. Iowa, number one with the lead. Number two with the ball. Harbaugh pulls out. Sends his backs into the formation. Hits Eric Caddis. And Larry Station hauls him down at the 41-yard line. But a good first down gain by Harbaugh. Now, what would you do strategically if you were sending Bo some plays from up here where you've been watching? Right? I think just exactly what he did on that first down play. Go ahead and throw the football off of run action. And on third down, go for sprint draws, that type of thing. But the Iowa defense has played exceptionally well in the first three quarters thus far in this game. Bob Perryman in at fullback. Harbaugh hands it to him. Straight ahead in a big hole. So they send the short men. One of the things when you play Michigan, you can never forget the fullback because Schimbeckler will shove him down your throat. 17 yards by Perriman. Well, look from an end zone shot here. It's just a quick, they fake the ball to Jamie Morris and they pop the ball to the fullback. Good blocking at the point. That's Vital right there, number 67. And you can see Bob Perriman come right into the secondary and they're down and, well, not in the field goal position, but they got the first down at the 41. White replaces Perriman. And they'll run Jamie Morris up the middle. Daylight trying to split the safeties, and they haul him down inside the 20-yard line. That's as big a play as we've seen here this afternoon. 
Anytime you make the safeties, tackle that tailback, you know you got something going, and he had run for 23 yards before Mitchell and Norvell come over. Can't believe Tavacino, number 77, gets a great job there on station number 36. You see Devon Mitchell finally bring him down. There was big blocking, two big plays. Tavacino works over the nose, clears the middle, and Morris, who returned a kickoff 60 yards, does the rest. It's first and ten, and the Wolverines are on the chase. Harbaugh yelling the play at the line of scrimmage, and Iowa darts across, and now the penalty flags come down. This crowd noise has without question been a factor. They're going to assess a penalty, I think, to Iowa. Or they may call both sides offsides. Now Iowa says we were pulled offside. Schimbeckler is out at the 25-yard line. White comes in from the sideline. Bo Schimbeckler says, all right, you're the closest zebra. I'll give you an earful. <laughs> It's first and 15. Harbaugh back. Drops it out to White, and what a hit over there on that side. Oh, Nate Queer came and did some business, number 29. Era, let's find out, really, if Bo had a beef on this play. Let's see what happens here. 51 move, but he did not cross the line. If he picked up his hand, then it's an automatic five-yard penalty. There's movement if his, there. If his hand is picked up, he... Oh, yes, he moves. All right, second Mike. and 19 now with Jimmy Harbaugh. Split backs. Harbaugh pulls out the blitz. Station had a hand on him. Incomplete in the end zone. Send their All-American linebacker. And Larry Station was about to have Harbaugh's head. The blitz Watch. right here by both Davis and Station. Right there, Davis, I mean, Station gets to him. Harbaugh launches the ball. He had the receiver open, but he didn't have enough time to throw it accurately. blitz that time. Harbaugh back under pressure, scrambles to the right, and the Iowa defense with George Davis, their other inside linebacker, helping bring him down that time. They rise to the occasion with their best defensive series of the afternoon. Peyton Fry, been around a long time, has done a marvelous job here. So the penalty winds up hurting, and Mike Gillette will attempt a 40-yard field goal that would put Michigan back into the lead. It's long enough, and it's good. The Wolverines lead 10-9, 10.55 to go, and one and two still raging at each other in Iowa City. Big Ten race is hot and getting hotter. The Ohio State Buckeyes will face the Golden Gophers of Minnesota in college football next Saturday on CBS Sports. Back live, 10.55 to go. Along with Eric Parsegan, I'm Brent Musburger. Michigan leading Iowa 10-9, and again, it's Jamie Morris who popped through with the big play. He'd already returned to kick off 60 yards, and here the tailback gets through for 23 yards against the middle of that Hawkeye defense. Then after a five-yard penalty, the Hawkeyes stiffen on defense. A blitz by Larry Station affects Jimmy Harbaugh's pass into the end zone, and Michigan settles for a field goal. 
and Gillette nails it. It's 10-9 Michigan, 10.55 to go. As good as we expected. <laughs> exactly. Just what we expected. Rick Sutkowitz. Kick it off, and Robert Smith with brilliant speed. Sutkowitz drives Harmon into the end zone. No return on that kickoff. Chuck Long and the Hawkeyes will take over on the 20-yard line. It was just two weeks ago. But a reminder that next Saturday, the Ohio State Buckeyes will take on the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. 3.30 Eastern time on CBS. And we'll see if we can get an ending there like we're going to have here today and two weeks ago when the Hawkeyes had their backs against the wall when they took on Michigan State. And they drove down 80 yards with Chuck Long calling the bootleg play that gave them that win, 35-31. Now Long brings the Hawks to the line of strength. Runs the draw again. And it's Harmon. Jitter buggy. Out close to a first down. Never seen anybody since, well, sure, Gale Sayers could do it. But he stops and then starts as quickly as any runner I can remember in a long time. And he gained nine and a half yards. On the day era, how's he doing? 23 for 78. It was a good call. The draw play was good because Michigan was deployed anticipating a pass. A lot of linebackers back. And uh, there was only three or four linemen up there. And there was a lot of daylight for Harmon to pick that time. Remember when Bart Starr used to throw all the time in second and short? They show the power eye. They're going to throw out of it. Down the side to Robert Smith. He's crunched out of bounds at the 44. That's the second time today that Iowa, in second and short, has shown the power eye and passed. The run action pass off the power eye. Look at it from an end zone shot. Faking the ball to Harmon, which holds him. And watch Long put the ball right where it should be. Not enough response by Garland Rivers. Cannot get to the ball. That's like having a free passing down when you're second and a half yard. Because you've got to have confidence that you can always come back on third, get the first down, and keep it going. Now 10 minutes on the clock, a lot of time. The ball is near the 45, and here comes Harmon. Getting out near midfield, and again we see the Hawkeyes putting a move on this defense that has not broken here yet today. So two of the unbeaten squaring off here. Penn State prevail. Florida easily. And you can see that Oklahoma having great difficulty in the fourth quarter. Arkansas also losing. And Air Force goes to 7-0. Let's hear it for the Pentagon team. Even Navy won today. Army, though, lost to Notre Dame. Second and six. And Long will throw it. Pumps fake. Looks back. Goes for the home run, but he's going to overthrow everybody. Michigan defense, that deep zone, they will not let you get beyond. Garland Rivers was not giving Happel the home run in that situation. Well, we knew coming in here that there was a reason, obviously, why they were leading the nation in scoring defense, giving up 4.2 points per game, several field goals, but only one touchdown. But here they are in this football game where Michigan has only had 174 yards in total offense, while Iowa has 332. Yet they have not had a touchdown on the board yet. There they come back here, third and six. Long has time, but his receivers are covered. Now he comes back to the left. Helverson inside the 40. Out of bounds, first down, Hawkeye. <laughs> what a job by Long, and also the Iowa offensive line. They gave him a lot of time to throw the ball. The one thing that really impresses me is that Long, when he comes back, sees the whole field. If a receiver isn't open, he scrambled out to the right here. He looks downfield, looking for anyone that might come open. He finds Halverson clear on the opposite side, number 87 right here. The ball right there. What a job by Long. Tremendous. Scott Halverson, a one-time walk-on. But you can believe that Hayden Fry marked him down for a full scholarship a long time ago. 
first and ten inside the 40. Up a quick count to draw by Harmon. Harmon trying to get to the right. Down near the 35. From off the 34 yard line. Let's show you exactly what we've been talking about when it comes to Ronnie Harmon's feet. He will come up and he will stop on this and then just dart. There's the stop. Almost to a complete stop. Then ever so quickly swinging out to the right. You know how tough it is to try and tackle somebody who's moving like that? I mean, it's almost impossible when he puts a move on. Here is second and six. Long straight back. Throws to Happel. Happel drilled out of bounds by Garland Rivers. Oh, Rivers hit him like a ton over there on that sideline. They get another first down, however. One of their favorite passes, I'll tell you, just the out pattern. Watch Long put some steam on that one. There's Happel again on this one of the favorite patterns of Iowa. They just keep breaking your back with that particular play. Happel coach has caught nine passes for 107 yards right now. There you can see how much they have been here today. But Bo Schimbeckler says, we ain't let you in the end zone yet. And it's 10-9. Tim Beckler and Michigan ahead. 8.25 to go. That top ranking. Who knows? Maybe a Rose Bowl trip on the line. Here comes Harmon. He stepped inside the 25. Out of bounds at the 24-yard line. You know, speaking of bowls there, we've got the Cotton Bowl and the six others represented here today. I'm sure the Orange is represented. So now we've got a second and six. Elverson and Long coming back in from the side. Yeah, wouldn't that be some Cotton Bowl? I'd hate to jinx Iowa, but how about the 50 of the rematch with Texas and Iowa? You think the Horns wouldn't like to <laughs> shot at that? Chuck Long got him for six touchdowns last year. Oh, he's crushed this time. The defense was ready, and they came with the blitz. One of the few times that Michigan has gone man-to-man, -man, blitzed from, the, and they guessed right, they blitzed from the wide side of the field oh, and knocked Long down for negative yardage. Now, they have not been taking any chances. Watch at the top of the screen. You see that they're in man coverage this time, and you see right there, Hicks Ivan through. Hicks right comes in from the strong side of the field. Trying to keep that record intact. If you'd like a defensive stat on Michigan, how about this one? They've yet to give up an extra point this year. That's right, one touchdown, but the extra point failed. You're watching live coverage of the Iowa Hawkeyes against the Michigan Wolverines, who, as this week continued, wound up ranked number one Iowa and number two Michigan in the Associated Press poll of broadcasters and writers across the nation. Seven minutes and 50 seconds to go. The Hawkeyes face a third and 16 here. And it will be their 70th play when they run it to Michigan's 38. I'll be interested to see whether Michigan takes any chances here by going to man-to-man -man or zoning off again. Long has picked up more than just 16 yards on other zone coverages. Let's see if they do it again. Nope, they're in zone again. Yeah, Hicks has dropped off. And Long rolls in that way. Going to keep it, but he'll be far short of a first down. However, is he close enough to allow Holtland now to attempt what would be his fourth field goal if successful? I think he is. Uh, Holtland's got good range. There's a light wind in his face, but he'll be kicking the equivalent of a, let's see, about uh, 40, he's going to put the ball down 44 yards, I think, Brent. He's a junior out of Glenview, Illinois. He attended high school at New Trier in the Chicago area. Ball is down at the 34, and the kick is on its way, but it's going to be short. So Michigan's one-point lead continues with 7.38, and that staunch Michigan defense has done it again. Just unbelievable. I mean, you can't believe that this team has not scored a touchdown. And yet, do you realize that the Hawkeyes have scored almost twice as many points as Michigan has been allowing? <laughs> so it's 10-9. Michigan with the lead on Iowa. Welcome those.
those of you who watched Auburn come back behind Bo Jackson and beat Georgia Tech 17-14. We are live in Iowa City, 7:38 left in the game. Michigan leading Iowa 10-9. The Hawkeyes have just missed an attempted field goal of 44 yards. The Wolverines run the tailback, Jamie Morris, out beyond the 30-yard line. And Arab, how do you look at the Michigan offense and what it must do right now? I think Michigan has got to grind out some first downs. They've got to run that clock down because Iowa is so dangerous with Long and the receivers and Harmon that they can score at any time or get into field goal position. Bo would love to be able to hold on to that football for a while. Iowa obviously is going to try to take the ball away and get it back in Harmon's hands. Perryman is at fullback. He brought the play in. Harbaugh hands to Perryman. Trying to get straight ahead, but short of the first down. So those of you who joined us, either from the other game or perhaps you're just back in the house, here's how the scoring went. Fulton kicked his first field goal, 35 yards, and Iowa took a 3-0 lead. But then it was Harbaugh to White on a shovel pass, and Michigan led for the first time. Iowa, though, soon moved to within a point. It was a 7-6 game, and Holtland had the Hawkeyes ahead 9-7 before Gillette kicked a field goal for Bo Schimbeckler. It was 10-9. And here it is third and two. Harbaugh checking off at the line. Comes with a tailback read brilliantly by the Iowa team at Larry Station. Their All-American linebacker just brutalizes him. Iowa took a chance by going to a goal line defense. Station came right through the gap as we take another look at it. Number 36 Station, as you see, the lead blocker does not pick, picks up the one linebacker. Station takes him down. Iowa's going to get the football back. So it's coming down to this. Robbins to punt for the Wolverines. Happel and an ever-dangerous Smith are back deep. They have been punting away from Smith all game long. And Happel has been signaling for one fair catch after another. Low snap. Robbins gets a booming high punt. Happel fair catches at the 22-yard line. So when you come back, it'll be Chuck Long at Iowa against the best defense in the land. You'd never expect to catch a fish in downtown Austin. Yet that's the reason people come to the Austin Angler, one of the few places in Texas you can get a custom-made split bamboo fly rod and a fresh-tied woolly one to go on the end. So if you go there, remember, keep your rod tip up and put your visa card down. Because at the Angler, they don't take fishing lightly, and they don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Today, Chevrolet is a little import called Spectrum, a spectacular combination of fun and practicality. We call it... Spectrumality. Solid. Spectrumality. Price. Spectrumality. Room. Spectrumality. Technology. Spectrumality. Spirit. Spectrumality. Economy and more, all part of the new Chevy Spectrum, a spectacular combination of fun and practicality called... Spectrumality. At every level of competition, he's been a champion. The Patrick Ewing era begins next Saturday against Moses Malone and the 76ers on CBS Sports. Texas stuns Arkansas. There was another time, 1969, when Texas was one and Arkansas was two, and Darrell Royal called that great pass. It was James Street to Randy Peschel. That pulled it out for the Horns. And now the Longhorns are very much back in contention for a Cotton Bowl. And how about this shocker this afternoon? Vinny Testaverde is for real. 27-14. Bernie Kosar won his debut in the NFL last week with the Cleveland Browns, and the young man who replaced him did a great job this afternoon in leading them to victory against Oklahoma. We'll have the Hurricanes on our CBS schedule a little bit later in the season. First and 10 now. 5-27. Long out. Under pressure. Going down. And Harmon drops the ball. Monty Robbins has punted extremely well for Bo Schimbeckler. There is no doubt in my mind but that the kicking game has been the big difference. Robbins with the punt. 
Gillette has kicked the field goal to put them ahead, and Morris returned that kickoff 60 yards. And Arafar Seekin, just what you said at the top of the day, if there's anything that'll decide a big game like this, it could be the kicking game. Two big giants playing like this, that's what's going to happen. The penalties, the kicking game, the turnovers, and a great defense on the part of both teams in this game. 23 off a great play fake freezes a backer long down the sideline to Smith almost intercepted by Brad Cocker in number 30. It is almost impossible to throw deep against this zone coverage employed by the Wolverines. Now Cochran had the ball in his hands. I'm not so sure about Long's judgment on this particular play but look at Harmon number 31 open right there right in your screen. Long elects to go deep. Cochran reacts very well. Fortunately for the Hawkeyes, he drops the football right there. And Iowa will have a third and ten. Happel and Helverson. There are two great control receivers check in. And Cochran, one of the standouts on this defensive unit. What a cornerback he is. He tightens up right away on Helverson. Just three yards away from him, out to the left. Long looking for Helverson. And Helverson got a move, and they throw underneath to the tight end flag. Flag is out of bounds, and he is close to a first down. Arrow, did he have it? Looks very, very close. Pending for Michigan number 17. It's marked on this sideline in the... Yep, he got it. Five minutes and eight seconds. Flag has been very quiet in this particular ball game, but here he is making a great catch for a first down and gives Iowa three more opportunities at least. Arrow, we saw Cochran come up to make the hit. What transpired early was that Helverson took him off the line and quickly put an out move on him. Cochran turned to look at him, and as he did, they sent the tight end underneath. It was a beautifully executed pattern for the first down by Chuck Long and the Hawkeyes. Straight back from the middle, incomplete. The receivers were pretty well covered that time, even though that Michigan was in a zone. The receivers were well covered. A lot of people around all the potential receivers. Andy Moeller in particular, and Hap Peterson of the defensive unit, yelling encouragement to his offense. Five minutes to go, and long on the day is 24 completions and 37 attempts for 280 yards, just one interception. Jamie Morris, who has contributed two big plays to the Wolverines this afternoon. Now they hand to Harmon. Harmon trying to get ahead of steam. Gets out beyond the 45 for a first down. And they make Hicks come up to finally bring him down. No jitter bugging that time. Just straight ahead quickness on the part of Harmon. Harmon on the day has rushed for 101 yards. He has caught passes totaling 72 more. Down to the last 454. Number one trying to come back against number two. Well, we saw Iowa operate under pressure two weeks ago against Michigan State, and they bailed it out. Here's Harmon, sweep right. The inside was cut off, and they string the play out. That time, Michigan did not leave any gaps for Harmon to cut back, and Akers finally made the tackle on him, but they sealed off all the openings with that wall that they like to pose. Jeff Akers did an excellent job. Take a look from the, uh, the Iowa side, just a pitch sweep to Harmon. Look at the white shirts. Now watch Jake, Jeff Akers, number 33, fight through the blockers and make the tackle on Harmon. An excellent job by Jeff Akers. And did you see number 42, Mike Mallory? He was not allowing Harmon to cut back. Great defense. They don't send two men to one spot. They hold their ground. Harmon up the middle. And that's going to leave Chuck Long and the Hawkeyes with a big third down. And Jimmy Harbaugh pacing the sidelines and knowing he might have to go back out there and kill this clock. And will Michigan go to man-to-man -man and try to blitz Long, or will they drop off in the zone as they have done about 95% of the time this afternoon? Robert Smith, the speedster, checks into that huddle, and so does Quinn Early. Long has picked up countless number of first downs on third and long. Can he do it again? They use the eye formation. Long is back. Over the middle, first down. He went to flag. The tight end. 
So that's twice he is hitting for critical first downs. And up to this drive, Flag had not been much in the ball game. He's only caught three, two of them on this drive. Here it is again with long in the pockets, staying poised, and he hits Mike Flag number 86 for the first down. Three minutes and five seconds remain in Iowa City. Michigan leads Iowa 10-9. The Hawkeyes again on the move, but so far the Wolverines have not let them across that goal line with a touchdown. And Long is going to use one of Iowa's remaining timeouts. They are now down to their last timeout. So we'll take a break. And then when we come back, it'll be the last 251. Test pilot Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. Up here, power when you need it can save your neck. When you get back down to your car, it helps too. Today's smaller engines need extra firepower from a spark plug, and AC delivers. If you could look inside your engine, you'd see an AC spark plug delivering up to 30,000 volts, firing 30 times a second. Firepower when you need it from AC. Get rebates now on AC spark plugs. Never wait for trouble. Sometimes getting car financing turns out to be one long hassle. What uh, kind of car did you have in mind? A Fiero. Oh, an Italian car. It's a Pontiac from General Motors. You know, Motors. they make Chevrolets, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, Cadillacs. GMC trucks. This is none of my business, but those are not Italian cars. Make it easy on yourself. Finance your car or truck right at your GM dealer with GMAC. You understand we do have to know what you want to do with all these cars. Nobody knows more about financing and leasing cars than GMAC. Agatha Christie's most famous snoop puts his nose to another case of murder most foul. Peter Rustinov and Faye Dunaway in Agatha Christie's 13 at dinner. That's tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern Time, the NFL Today. Irv Cross, John Madden, and Pete Rose all live. And then regional coverage. Most of you will be watching the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. Are the Washington Redskins all the way back? You'll find out tomorrow, so check your local listings for the game and time in your area. We'll start tomorrow afternoon at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Here we're down to 2.51. First and 10 for Iowa, trailing by a point. Here comes Harmon. There's a hole. Ronnie Harmon across the 30. Another first down. And Ronnie Harmon is the first back this year to gain more than 100 yards against the Michigan defense. From the end zone, you'll see excellent blocking on the left side of the line. Number 35, Bush, a fullback, did a beautiful job of blocking out, and Harmon really popped through there. Dave Croston helped open that hole in the offensive line. That demonstrates his greatness, because the Wolverines have shut down on all kinds of running backs this year. First and 10. Ronnie to try it again. Penalty marker is down. Thrown near the line of scrimmage, right there where an umpire could assess holding. On a first and ten, there's a penalty marker thrown. And an important one against the Hawkeyes with 2.22 remaining. Tough penalty. Brian, up to this point, Michigan has made nine first downs, Iowa 25. So it will be now first and 20. The ball is stepped back to the 36. A little more breathing room for this Michigan defense. Gary Moeller, the coordinator, signals in the play. And now Mallory has passed it along to the defense. Rolling, moves his pocket under pressure, and he can't get it off. There is a penalty marker down near the 10-yard line, however. There is a penalty marker down near the 10-yard line. Must be defensive holding. Yep. A critical call against the Wolverines, and Schimbeckler says, well, he's not saying anything. <laughs> Just in case, 
the Wolverines have to come back one last time. Harbaugh is getting ready. Well, those two penalties have moved them out of field goal range and now back in field goal range. But it's still a first down play, Brent. Brent. And the ball will be spotted there at the 26-yard line with the first down. And of course, now you have to consider Rob Hotland, the Iowa kicker. They trail it 10-9, 155. It may come down to a field goal attempt here with time running out. Long to Harmon. Michigan reads it. Busted right across the line of scrimmage. Mike Hammerstein is the first one who got in there. He slowed him up. Not allowed help from his friends. Hammerstein got a lot of penetration that time. He made his blocker miss. Got deep into the backfield and slowed Harmon down. He makes so many big plays. You see those Wolverine stickers on his helmet? He makes so many that Bo says, for you, Hammerstein, one counts ten. Otherwise, <laughs> we wouldn't be able to see a helmet. Now the precious seconds counting away on Iowa. Long is back. Waits. Drops it over the middle, complete. They are inside the 25. Mike Mallory there with the coverage. But now, of course, it is going to come down to Rob Holton. So it's third down. Mallory goes over to the sideline. The defense wants the rest. They have called a timeout. We are inside of a minute. Gary Moeller, Bo Schimbeckler, and the stars of that defense. This Bud's for all you guys who know it's how you play the game. This Bud's for you. There's no one else who makes them move the way you do. Come your way. So here's to you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. Listen, I don't know how they found out about the saving place sale before you did, but they're buying things like crazy. Fresh and fresh paint at 548, it's disappearing. Came on antifreeze, just two for four dollars after rebate. Gala towels, 59 cents. Halloween Junior Boss, a dollar ninety-nine. They can't last. As for these electric blankets, I'll hide one under the counter for you. Kmart, the saving place. You can't do better, but you better hurry. Big Ten race is hot and getting hotter. The Ohio State Buckeyes will face the Golden Gophers of Minnesota in college football next Saturday on CBS Sports. The war of number one and number two down to its last minute. Along with Eric Parsig and I'm Brent Musburger. Michigan leading 10-9, 54 seconds to go. It is a third and six against this Michigan defense. And then, of course, if they fail, it will be Rob Holton who will attempt a field goal, which could pull this one out for the Hawkeyes. But the Michigan defense has not surrendered a touchdown here this afternoon. They have given up only three field goals to Holton. He has also missed one in this game. So an unbelievable defensive performance six games into the season. Michigan has surrendered just one touchdown. That to Wisconsin. Extra point failing in that game. Now it's a big play. Third and six. And they run Hudson up the middle. Very close to the first down. Hayden Fly runs down to see if he's got the first down. He's got it. He's got it, and he goes back and says, let's keep it going. They're down now to 50 seconds. That was a big play by Iowa to pick up the first down. They put a blitz on. Jeff Akers, number 33, missed him at the line of scrimmage. And Hudson just barreled his way to that first down. Era, the defense relaxed for just a second when they saw that Ronnie Harmon was not in the backfield. He was over in the sideline, and they set Hudson up as a lone setback. They ambushed him, and now Harmon is back on the field inside the 15, down to the 13. 22 seconds, 21. 
one timeout left. 15-14, they're going to let it run down to the kick. He wants the timeout called at five seconds. There it is. Ooh. They've got to call it. And oh, they Ooh. just do get it done. I know some coaches who won't wait that long. They say once you get to 10, call your timeout and get your field goal unit out there. But Hayden says, let's take it all the way to five. I don't want Michigan coming back with Jamie Morris returning a kickoff. So here it is. You play all afternoon, number one against number two. And then you turn it over to the field goal specialist. And Rob Holton of Glenview, Illinois, has a chance to keep Iowa number one. But that's not a little pressure right there. It's going to be about a 29-yard kick. He has hit three of four already here this afternoon. And, of course, the field goal defense huddling over there on the sideline. Another former head coach, Alex Agassi, has worked with those special teams units along with Bo Schembechler, Barry Moeller. They will try to apply some pressure on that young man. Michigan could call a timeout right here and try to increase the pressure on him, and they do just that, I believe. Yes, they do. Michigan calls a timeout, and now Hayden Fry. He wants to talk to the field goal team. The drama continues in Iowa City. The first place Cowboys renew their heated rivalry with the Eagles or see the Redskins take on the Giants among the regional games tomorrow on CBS Sports. For Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes is a nervous two seconds. Rob Holtland has kicked field goals of 35, 27, and 36. Here he is attempting a 29-yarder, which would beat Michigan. It's on its way, and it's good.